Well, a very good afternoon, uh, everyone. This is Diksha Tiwari extending a very warm welcome to everyone, our esteemed panelists, and also all our audience who have joined us from all across the country for this webinar, which is a joint initiative of Naval Tata Hockey Academy and the Department of Sports and Youth Services, Government of Odisha. Being organized on the occasion of uh, Olympics Day and also the auspicious occasion of Rath Yatra of Lord Chidanath. I would just like to inform that uh, though we are organizing a webinar today, there's been a deep long celebrations for Olympic Day that has been happening uh, on behalf of the Academy. And uh, for this webinar today, I would like to inform everyone that we have two sessions. First one would be on the theme Momentum towards Post COVID 19 Olympics followed by a special session on importance of tactics and penalty corners in modern day hockey. So I request all our audience to please stay connected with us for both the sessions, which would be of one hour each. Well, we all are aware that had this pandemic not struck the globe, we would have been just a month away from the Tokyo Olympics. But these are unprecedented times, and that is precisely why in the history of Olympic Games, the Summer Olympic Games have been postponed and not cancelled. As we gear up for the post-COVID-19 Olympics, united by emotions, which is also the motto for the 2021 Olympics, we are privileged to have with us today for the first session a galaxy of legendary Olympians who brought laurels for India, luminaries from the sporting fraternity, including those from the government and the corporate sector. So we have with us today Mr. R. Vinil Krishna, Director, Commission Secretary, Department of Sports and Youth Services, Government of Odisha, Dr. Narendra Dhruv Batra, Member International Olympic Committee, President Indian Olympic Association and FIH, Mr. Chanakya Chaudhary, VP Corporate Services, Tata Steel and Chairman, Hockey Ace Foundation, Mr. Leander Pace, seven-time Olympian and multiple Grand Slam winner, Mr. Abhinav Bindra, World and Olympic Champion, Mr. Flores Boglander, ex-Netherlands field hockey player and Olympic gold medalist, Ms. Anju Bobby George, Olympian and IAF World Champion, and of course, we also have with us Ms. Ilana Norman, CEO, Hockey India. So I don't think it can get better, right? But I think, yes, it can better because it can get better because to make this session as interesting as it can happen, we have with us former Indian cricketer, wicketkeeper, and a very popular commentator, Deep Das Gupta. Mr. Das Gupta's exploits behind the wickets are known to all. And to his repertoire, he has added his wonderful articulation also as a sports commentator. So I welcome all our panelists and Deep once again to this session. And before I hand it over to Deep, could I now invite Mr. R. Vinil Krishna, Director, Commission Secretary, Department of Sports and Youth Services, Government of Orissa, to give his address. And IIT alumnus, he's been instrumental in taking Orissa sports to new heights of glory, successfully organizing international and national sporting events of eminence, including the Men's Hockey World Cup 2018. Could I now request him to share Orissa's journey to becoming the sports capital of India? Over to you, sir. Thank you so much. A very warm welcome to the respected dignitaries and friends to this webinar. I extend my best wishes on the occasion of the Olympic Day. You notice as Diksha was mentioning, it is also a uh, very special occasion as the thread Radhiyatra of Lord Jagannath is happening today. Uh, both the Honorable Minister and the Secretary are in Puri for the Radhiyatra responsibilities. They couldn't join the webinar today. Uh, they have asked me to convey their best wishes on this occasion to all of you. We are glad that today this uh, webinar could be organized by NTHA and department to discuss sports in the midst of the uh, corona pandemic. Now, this is a crisis which the world has never witnessed earlier. Every single human soul is affected by this virus in one way or the other. The economies of the world are shrinking. People are losing lives, losing jobs, and going through tough situations, including uh, widespread psychological issues. The world of sports has come to stand still since last four months. It's facing a very grave scenario in the near future. The Olympics for the first time had to be postponed due to the virus. There will still be uncertainty about the Olympics until it actually happens uh, next year. 
the sp sponsorships have dried up as the companies around the world are cutting costs and are saving the surpluses in this context what is the way forward for sports as they rightly said there is going to be a pre corona world and a post corona world in the pre corona world we in odisha were planning big in terms of infrastructure coaching program high performance centers etc etc we were on a roll we were on a high to do something for sports in india we were we were aiming to become one of the uh, leading sports destinations in the country but corona has brought a serious reality check for all of us Uh, look at even the personal lives haven't we all uh, learnt a lot during the lockdown and in the last four months about what is actually important in our lives what are the things we can uh, still survive without now these reflections will also be equally applicable for sports as well the budgets have been cut across the departments in terms of priorities survival needs comes first in india sports is seen as a luxury not as a uh, necessity we in the government have started facing this challenge of funds our budgets are cut down programs are cutted however every crisis provides an opportunity as someone said never waste a good crisis so we look at this crisis as a time for reorienting our strategy and optimizing the outcomes we are reprioritizing the infrastructure needs the big stadiums the big events are are no longer going to be a priority we have to focus on the basics first build infrastructure where it is actually needed and can be optimally utilized especially at the grassroots level improve the existing infrastructure wherever available and build partnerships with stakeholders to leverage the strengths the coaching programs will be developed with integration with the sports and leveraging the huge residential schools in the in in our tribal residential schools that we have across the state and more importantly the use of technology is going to uh, be very important for improving the sports ecosystem take the example of today's webinar the webinars the online coaching programs all these will help in reducing the cost significantly while at the same time enhancing the knowledge sharing while we are fortunate that odisha government under shri navin patnaik has been very supportive of the sports initiatives in the last few years all of you know the kind of efforts that have gone Uh, in the last three or few years odisha has been investing a lot and genuinely trying to create a right atmosphere for sports in the country many of our programs and infrastructure is ongoing and government is continuing to provide the financial support due to the special interest of chief minister the finance department has also been very kind to our department compared to the uh, other departments and is sure to provide the support we hope that most of our infrastructure will be in place in the coming uh, uh, couple of years and we are also the already the host for fifa under 17 women world cup 2021 and also the hockey men's world cup in 2023 so we hope that uh, the momentum that was there in the last few years in odisha with respect to the sports will continue in spite of these massive problems uh, due to the pandemic uh, we we are seriously looking at how we need to re-strategize and focus on the outcomes in the long run Uh, it will be really interesting with such uh, uh, experienced uh, administrators and olympians today on the panel we really look forward to hearing uh, what your thoughts will be and how we can uh, we can use it to continue with our dream to make odisha as one of the leading sports destinations thank you thank you so much sir i think that was a very positive start and uh, very rightly said never waste a crisis and that is what we need to do right now turn this crisis into an opportunity and i think the odisha government is already geared up to do that uh, well moving on we are privileged to have with us today dr narendra dhruv batra member international olympic committee president indian olympic association and president fih a passionate never say die sports administrator it is under his leadership that indian hockey got a sustainable competitive structure becoming a powerhouse today the hockey india league one of the most promising sporting leagues of india is his brain child which brings together the best of hockey from all across the world but then one can simply go on about dr batra he is the first indian to be elected as president of any summer and winter international olympic sports federation he was elected president of ioa in 2017 in june 2019 he was elected as member of the international olympic committee 
And again, in 2020, he was named as member of the IOC Olympic uh, Chang Committee. So it would be really a privilege to now hear the keynote address from Dr. Batra. Over to you, sir. Good afternoon, Ji. First of all, I'll start with Jay Jagannath. I think it's a very auspicious period in Odisha today, auspicious day. So Jay Jagannath, I'll start with that. And uh, I'd like to welcome all my co-panelists, Vinil Krishna Ji. I think, is my mic audible? Yes, sir, it is. Okay. Uh, I'd like to welcome Vinil Krishna Ji for taking this initiative today for all of us to meet uh, on this uh, Olympic day with a all my great athletes of India. Firstly, I welcome Tata Steel, uh, who are partnering today in this program. Then Leander, Abhinav, Anju, and Florence, who joined from uh, Holland, I believe. And Deep Das Gupta, who is our moderator. So welcome to, today to this program. Ilana, I want to welcome you because you're part of the same team. I hope you'll agree with that. Uh, I'll start with just... A uh, few saying few things that I hope you all are healthy and safe on this Olympic Day 2020. I am happy to be talking to you today through this great initiative taken by Odisha State Government and Odisha Sports Department. I think during this unusual time, it is important uh, for us to remember our Olympic values, to be a guiding light through all challenges we may face and which we are facing. The values which are excellence, friendship respect and solidarity. These values make us act together in a positive manner towards the greater good, a vision we must all share with everyone for our greater good. Uh, I must give credit to, to the efforts of Odisha government who have done commendable work, especially the sports department, sharing during this period, despite several crises that the state faces, they had super cyclones and now pandemic, they always remain committed towards their larger goal in development of sports and nothing seems to deter them. So I think that's a very, I would say I, I deal on an all India basis with many state governments and many times I face that they're very nice when you meet them, but when you go to meet them again, they always have a story to say, okay, sorry, they say maybe next year. But uh, Odisha is one state I've seen, I've been working with them now since 2011. And I've never seen such positive and helpful and constructive attitude, which I see in Odisha, and I really call it my second home. It really warms my heart when I see the grassroots initi initiatives taken by OSG. OSG is the Odisha state government. And I believe these initiatives will yield great results when we are long-term planning that we want India to be in the top 10 in the medals during 2028. And that's why I always call Bhuvaneshwar Odisha as the sports capital of India, even though officially it is not named, but I can say de facto, Bhuvaneshwar is the sports capital of India. I think most of the things Vinilji touched in his speech, only thing I'll say that we are not at any disadvantage. So everybody is going through the same crisis. My main focus right now would be how to prepare for 2021 Olympics. It's same situation for all the countries. Sometimes I have attended many webinars where I'm told that football has started in Germany, it started in Spain, it started in England. So why are there delays happening in India? So a lot of comments are given, but when I, when I speak on the European platform, I say that please look at one thing about India. If you take the total population of Europe, all the countries have put together 52 or whatever there are. India is almost double the population. So don't compare us with you. We have different there's community spread, so many things. You can't travel. See, uh, we are small countries, and I think they have already reached their maximum as far as COVID is concerned. So we have to take those precautions, travel by train, travel by so many things. So right now, our main focus is on the elite athletes now. If you ask me how we are planning and how we are structuring. We have about 78 athletes who have already qualified for Olympics. And by the time I think all the other qualifications happen, I think we should touch a number of about 120, 25. That is the athletes, I would say. And uh, uh, along with support staff, it will be about 180, 185, something like that, the total contingent that we go. There are a few sports which have already started, like hockey has already started in Bangalore, weightlifting has started in Calcutta, athletics are doing in uh, Patiala, OT, three, four different places they are doing this. Other sports will join in. I think shooting, as I said, they don't want to start anything before 
July 15th. Uh, there are maximum medal medal prospects where there will there are about 17 athletes who have qualified and then play. They will be playing in about 21 medal events. So right now we have qualified for 41 medal events in this Tokyo Olympics. But the number will go up when other qualifications come up. We have qualifications to come from tennis. I hope Leander goes for his another Olympics and he makes a history for India by participating in so many Olympics. So we have Abhinav here also. He'll give his views. We have all the great athletes. Anju is there. So everyone is there. They'll be able to tell you much better than me how the preparation happens. So I can say we are on track. I am in touch with all the NSFs, their presidents, their secretary generals. At some places, I am in touch directly with the athletes also. But Anju is our chair of the athletes committee of IOA. So she also keeps in touch with the athletes. So it's a coordinated effort going on between government, between IOA, NSFs, athletes. Everyone's things are understood. It, it's a situation where uh, I think the best has to be taken out of the world. So we have to just find out what are the best avenues that are available in the situation. The government guidelines are there. You have to maintain distance, so many things. So how much, there are games in which you don't require that much level of fitness and certain games require maximum level of fitness. Until you are in your complete match competition condition, you can't reach those levels. So these are, uh, I mean to say, uh, problems which are there right now, but I'm quite sure that uh, by August end, I think we should be in a full flow of our practice and everything, the way things are shaping up. That's my feeling. That's how things will go in India. But I think there are more people who can tell you much better than me what's going on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. In fact, uh, very rightly said that uh, we are on the track and things can only get uh, better from here. And yes, we'll definitely get back to you, I'm sure, when the discussion happens and uh, There'll be other aspects that we would like to cover and hear from you. Uh, well, our, uh, you know, we would also like to hear the corporate side of the story. Here we have with us Mr. Chanakya Chaudhary, VP Corporate Services, Tata Steel, and Chairman Hockey Ace Foundation with over 30 years of experience in varied functions and locations. Today, he is in charge of a wide corporate affairs profile uh, covering the functions of administration, town and estate, corporate communication, CSR, security, aviation, sports, and medical services. Of course, we all know sports has been integral to Tata Steel's philosophy of nation building and Mr. Chaudhary firmly believes that sports is a way of life at Tata Steel. So could we hear, could we hear from him and can you share your thoughts with us uh, today? Over good to afternoon. you, sir. Yeah, good afternoon and thanks for introducing me. At times when you hear your own introduction, you kind of start thinking whether it's you or someone else. Nevertheless, uh, yeah, it's it's actually uh, so, good afternoon, Mr. Krishna. I don't see him on the screen right now, but I, I think whatever he said, let me start with that. I think Orissa, hi, hi, good afternoon. The Orissa government has actually done a lot on sports without even informing anyone or announcing it. So I remember uh, way back, I was in London a few years back, and then I saw an ad of the Orissa government saying Orissa uh, football or hockey, I don't recall the event, I think it was hockey. And uh, uh, and this was about a couple of years before the event actually took place in Bhubaneswar. So uh, uh, we are happy that we are partners uh, in more than ways than one. We have investments in Orissa and in terms of manufacturing, but also now for hockey. Having said that, and what you rightly said, Tata Steel being more than a hundred year old organization has been, uh, I would say in way also been pioneers in promoting sports, sportsmen, sports persons actually, and uh, also setting up infrastructure for sports. Uh, having said that, I think over a period of time, we also realized initially we used to uh, pick up the talented sports persons from across the country, give them the right kind of skills and training, sponsor their events and ensure that they get the right skills and then they can participate in national and international events. And by virtue of which we had a lot of good, I would say, returns in terms of medals. We today boast about more than 150 Arjuna, uh, uh, all award, awardees put together, I'll say. Then we suddenly realized that this model can only take us a, a little distance, you know, in terms of when you have individual sports persons excelling, it gives you a high. And then we realized that maybe the infrastructure needs to come in. And then we built stadiums and residential 
uh, spaces and then we got into academies and our first academy was a football academy which came up in 1987 and the tata football academy through which we realized the importance of a residential academy which runs sports and education together and through that one can actually see the development and evolution of individuals and uh, there was a time when most of the indian national football team would be from tata football academy though we do, didn't do too well in football as a country i am now happy that we see a lot of other clubs joining in and uh, football has also opened up like a league uh, then came in the archery academy and archery academy actually brought us a lot of laurels i think the rio uh, archery team rio olympics out of four three had passed out from our academy and even today we have kamolika bari and others being in the shortlisted for the next olympics uh, deepika has just moved out and i think she was to get married and she's moved to bharat petroleum now she's also graduated from here and the latest one was our uh, hockey academy which started in jamshedpur in 2017 and then we went to uh, join hands with the government of orissa for a hockey academy at uh, at bhubneshwar and i must appreciate the kind of speed with which the government of orissa actually not only thinks through and then drives at times we used to feel that who's faster the government or us because they would ask us to do something which we are thinking of doing day after they want it to happen day before so nevertheless i think it's and it's a fantastic facility which they have given to our cadets and it's all girls team there and uh, i think it's really growing in strength and it should be doing well now i had just one or two thoughts one is on the pandemic i'll speak about it but uh, what we've also found and deliberately i have brought in these academies because these are residential programs where you pick up young children young children for football we were looking at 9 to 14 years and now i find the difference in a kid who's in india or in china or in europe or us anywhere is that they start early so the grassroots programs really help us so in football we've realized that in the last 2 to 3 years when we started the grassroots program for our tata football academy 3000 children we are in touch with having coaching programs and stuff like that the younger the children come in the better it is for them because they have a larger scope and if the the child is talented and getting the right kind of skills and coaching he and she he or she could be the world champion tomorrow we don't know but i think that's the larger difference which we have seen in india not happening at an early age and that's the age because i think somewhere uh, the parents at least in my generation the parents were always looking for engineers and doctors so uh, you had to first study and then sports would happen by the way but now things have changed and they should be changing much more and i think with the leagues which have come in Uh, whether it's kabaddi or whether it's after the ipl actually the cricket league whether it's football and other hockey and other that's giving a lot of impetus to sports now second uh, thing is on the pandemic which i heard both of you speak uh, obviously pandemic has been a disruptor disruptor in a big way we are seeing even today our manufacturing facilities are going only at about 60 70% of the capacities which were till march middle were all out going at 100% having said that i think economy has always a cycle so some disruptor or the other will come hopefully things will come back to normal the second important part is that uh, how do we deal with this crisis and i think what what was rightly said is it also brings in an opportunity so what we've looked at in the sports side a lot of these events which we used to do where physical children would come play get coaching have converted on the virtual platforms a digital platform so we used to have a, a summer camp for kids uh, in jamshedpur uh, which would have about anywhere from 1500 to 2000 children because it was summer time and we realized that that will not happen but we said we'll do it on the uh, virtual platform to our surprise the numbers were much higher because there was no age group bracket thereafter even the parents were joining some of the sports and even yoga was happening and stuff like that so that has given us a lot of insight in terms of what all we can do second is that some of the residential academies which were already in place so let's say the archery and the football the cadets were right inside 
and they were not getting impacted by anyone from outside so they could continue with their practice maintaining the social distance and we took all the approval saying these children are already inside no one is going from other coaches are inside only the food gets to be with them and they have continued their practices which has really helped i think what you were rightly saying batra ji is that some of the sports which are contact sports will take some more time to come back however some of the sports which are typically with lesser contact and lesser or individual sports will come back earlier than the normal and the faster it comes back the better it is our own understanding and what we are seeing right now because the community spread is yet to take place in uh, our region which is orissa and jharkhand it's just about starting we expect that we'll peak somewhere in by middle of august because Jul july will be the critical month and community immunity will come in or herd immunity as you hear these days possibly we should be back on track by august middle so 15th august is what we are looking at as an independence day of india as possibly the independence day from corona itself so thanks for calling me in uh, that much to start with and i'll be happy to take any questions if there thank you thank you thank you so much sir and i really hope that independence day will also give us freedom from corona virus i'm sure that's a very positive uh, thought uh, well now like i had mentioned in the beginning to make this session as interesting as it can get we have with us deep das gupta a former indian cricketer wicket keeper and an excellent sports commentator so deep i would request you to not take this forward right thank you so much diksha and uh, listen it was enlightening and reassuring hearing from mr vinil uh, mr vinil krishna dr narendra patra uh, mr chanakya choudhury about you know how things can be taken forward and especially for the sports fraternity uh, i mean listen we are all part of the ecosystem and it's just amazing to hear uh, how things are looking and shaping up uh, post the uh, the covid situation uh, well it's a fanboy moment for me to be very honest i mean uh, as a kid uh, the olympic movement is something that has always inspired me well uh, that inspiration helped i did go on to represent the country but could not uh, be part of the opening ceremony or the closing ceremony or 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 be part of that uh, olympic uh, sports village uh, but we'll hear from the legends themselves people who've been there done it and champions and uh, we've got obviously we've got some huge names champions like leander pays abhinav bindra floris boblander anju bobby george and also we'll hear from uh, elena normal who's uh, who's ceo of uh, hockey india about you know how hockey is uh, is going and getting back to where it was a few decades ago uh, but to start off with uh, with uh, abhinav who's listen I, i was in england when when this happened he, he won the gold medal and suddenly i don't know him personally i didn't know him then uh, and and suddenly i was walking a few inches taller i was uh, i suddenly were, became few inches broader that's what sports can do and somebody like him who's a world champion the first and as of now the only individual gold medalist in olympics abhinav and that's that's just on the field or in the sports but post that also he's been very very uh, influential uh, as part of the uh, ioa and then with his own high performance centers and also the wonderful work he's doing through the refugee project uh, which i was reading about uh, was phenomenal stuff that he's been doing so uh, it, it's an absolute pleasure uh to introduce him and also request him to say a few words about his journey to uh, to getting to the gold medal uh, uh, position getting onto that podium and the important lessons that he's learned that can inspire the current athletes over to you abhinav well good afternoon everybody i'd like to first take this opportunity to wish you all a very happy olympic day i think it's only appropriate if i start with a quote from the founder of the olympic movement pierre de cobert cobert that the most important thing in the olympic games is not to win but to take part just as the most important thing in life is not the triumph but the struggle the essential thing is not to have conquered but to have fought well i think all my life uh, my sport of shooting has been a struggle um it was a contest with the self um, you know every shot was a battle every performance had de demanded that i looked within for an answer just below my apparent calm there was always tremendous conflict i think to win you need an internal rage uh, a desperation a hardness 
and eventually I became an athlete who relished to fight. I think uh, my journey to the gold medal was made possible due to many crucial things uh, coming together. That comes to the questions, uh, if are champions born? I really don't think so. Uh, it really is a bunch of extraordinary people um, who make champions out of ordinary kids. I think dreams require a team. Uh, and my Olympic and world championship titles uh, arrived because my parents and a clutch of experts uh, groomed a young boy to strive for excellence. Uh, the gold medal was for the moment. Um, you know, it was reward for about two hours of shooting. Uh, but for me, it's not the moment of victory that really matters. I think for it's taken more than two hours. I think it's taken, it took me probably eight or if not 12 years. It probably took uh, 250 international flights. It probably took uh, 600 moments of saying that I can't do this. <laughs> it uh, took hundreds of technical changes, probably 50 to 60 tastes of defeats, four or five nervous wobbits. It's taken, uh, it's been an internal struggle. It took psychology books, patient coaches, a supportive family. It's been a dream taken and uh, dipped into sweat to make it a reality. All that remains uh, what is really meaningful and what makes sports so beautiful. And probably the biggest life learner in, you know, I haven't, I, I probably have learned the most in life through sport. Well, going forward, I think, you know, every athlete has to find their own path and overcome their obstacles to success. Uh, that to me is the democratic beauty of sport. Um, However, there is one thing that is common that I've seen amongst everyone uh, that has achieved the pinnacle of whatever they've tried to do. And I would attribute that to honesty. Uh, honesty, why you're training, honesty, if you're giving it your best, is there something holding you back? Winning demands honesty and uh, it demands a sneering at the shortcut. Uh, it allows absolutely no fooling of the self. If I were to sum up my 22 years in sport and give you maybe or young athletes watching a couple of points, maybe three, uh, which sums up my journey. I think they would be that success is all about failing well. You have to learn from failure and uh, you have to learn to let go of the unwanted baggage that comes with failure. Success is really about loving the process. You have to fall in love with the boring and the mundane because success in sport is often about doing the boring and the mundane well. And finally, I think success in sport requires adaptability. And this current situation forces, our, forces us to adapt to this new situation. You know, although for us athletes, our favorite four letter word is plan, um, you can be rest assured that there will always be something that you haven't accounted for. And to overcome these situations, you have to learn how to adapt and you have to learn how to adapt quickly to, to dynamic situations because sport is dynamic by nature. You basically have to learn to be perfect on an imperfect day. So that was my journey. Thank you very much for inviting me here today. It's been a pleasure uh, to have had the opportunity to work with the government of Orissa. Uh, as Dr. Batra said early on, they really have made uh, Orissa the sports capital of this country and are so very proactive in, in, in in, in doing good for the whole sporting movement in India, especially the Olympic movement in India, and uh, my heartfelt gratitude to the government. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Abhinav. I mean, uh, it's, it's absolutely a pleasure to hear from you again and again, and those are very, very important aspects of sports, as in feeling well. And there's a taboo attached to failing, but it's also important because more often than not, we fail. And then we learn and then move on to be successful, the process, the adaptability. Phenomenal words. I'm, I'm sure that will resonate with a lot of people and, and, and a good learning lesson for the youngsters coming through. Uh, well, the next person is, uh, is one of the three musketeers. If uh, anyone who's a 90s child will know, uh, started off his journey uh, winning the junior Wimbledon in 1990. And then... Uh, since then, he's, he's been as strong as ever. It's been, what, three decades now. And in the process, I've won 18 Grand Slams, in numerous number of other tournaments, uh, an Olympic medal uh, to boot. Uh, 
and and someone who's inspired a generation along with someone like Abhinav as well. Uh, it's it's my absolute honor to introduce someone who's really inspired me when I was a teenager, uh, Leander Pays. Leander, over to you. Thank you, Deep. Uh, good afternoon to all my panelists and uh, all my fellow Olympians and to all the participants. Um, I'd like to first start off by wishing everyone and every athlete out there a happy Olympic Day celebration. It's quite unique that uh, we're all locked down at home and how we're participating on a webinar to reach out to each other and spread the Olympic dream. And I'd like to take one of my favorite Olympic athletes and use one of his quotes. Michael Phelps, the most decorated Olympic athlete of all time said, you can't put a limit on anything. The more you dream, the further you get. Well, this is exactly what dreams are made of. I was born to Olympic parents. My father won the, a bronze medal in the field hockey uh, championships in 1972 in Munich. And I used to polish my father's medal every Sunday. I would sit on the floor and pull his medal out and I would take time and polish him and ask him about the Greek goddess Athena. I would ask him about the ribbon around that Olympic medal. And apart from all the medals that my mother and my father had in our showcase at home, it was this one medal that really moved me. Well, it's a no wonder that I was an Olympic baby. I was conceived in 1972 in the Munich Olympic Village when the games were shut down for four days. That being said, I was also born with the genetics that both my parents gave me. But the most important thing is the desire and the passion that was instilled within my house. To me, growing up to two parents who, who excelled in their field of sport, both in basketball and hockey, I realized that patriotism and playing for one billion people was the single most important thing for a patriot like me. I gave up my dream in football, where I was more talented in football because my mother is Bengali, my father is from Goa, and growing up in Kolkata, football was the number one sport. But that being said, I realized at that time, football could not take me to be an Olympic champion. So I switched sports at the age of 12, and I switched to a sport tennis. When I told my father first that I'm switching to tennis, he laughed for six minutes. That same laugh for six minutes drives me today at 47. And as Dr. Batra so wonderfully done over all these uh, few months, not only has he handled the pressures of postponing the, the Olympics in Tokyo from 2020 to 2021, but he communicates with every single athlete out there. He communicates with associations out there. And Dr. Batra, I'd like to thank you for keeping me informed with all your wonderful messages, 25 messages a day sometimes, of all the wonderful news that is out there through the sporting fraternity. So Dr. Saeed, thank you very much. Um, that being said, it's wonderful to actually do some great work in Odisha. Odisha is the number one state in the country for sport. And I've got to thank Vinil Krishna Saeed. I've got to thank uh, Vishal Des. I've got to thank the chief minister and the whole sporting fraternity in Odisha for actually going out into that rural areas and finding the talent where it lies. I believe a country like India with 1.3 billion plus people, where 50% of our population is under the age of 26, we have got an audience of about 745 million students approximately in our country. That being said, most of our talent in India is untouched. And I think that states like Orissa are examples of how sports excellence in the grassroots levels is of the primary importance. Deep, when you actually look at the fact that we have the Hockey World Cup, Vinil Saeed just said we've got the Football World Cup coming. We've got more events happening in 22 and 23, hopefully. But if you actually look at the programs that are happening, both with Abhinav, with hockey, we've got Rajiv Seth looking after hockey there. We've got the great Floris Bovalander here with us, who I've actually followed his career because my father was a hockey player. Uh, Bovalander sir looks quite gentlemanly today, but he was quite a force on the field. When I'd watch him, it was intimidating, especially was when he was on that semicircle of the, uh, the short corners. That being said, when great minds come together, that is when excellence is able to be achieved. For me, I am humbly grateful to be here amongst this very esteemed uh, panel, Elena Norman, uh, who is the head of Hockey of India. Uh, I've never met ma'am, but I look forward to doing so. But with all the panelists that are here, I think that these discussions 
and using modern technology, um, as Mr. Chaudhary said, um, growing up in Kolkata, Jamshedpur was one of the excellences of sport, especially in the football academy. And when you look at what Tata has done, whether it's through their CSR, whether it's through their corporate sponsorship, the corporate responsibility that Tata has had over the years is really a pioneer and leading example for sport in our country. So I'd like to thank all of you all for inviting me here today. I'm really looking forward to this discussion. And as Dr. Batra said, the prime example of an athlete is to play for their country. And just shy of my eighth Olympics in a row, I really honor our flag and our people through my example. And for me, it has been the greatest honor as a patriot and as a young boy who grew up polishing my father's Olympic medal to represent 1.3 billion Indians in the field of Olympics. Yes, Deep, you mentioned I've won 18 Grand Slams. Yes, I've got the world record in Davis Cup. But if there was one trophy I cherish the most, which never leaves my bedside, is my Olympic medal. It is a great honor to bring laurels and, and, and history to India to make sure that India remains in the history books as the most Olympics ever played by an individual athlete in the field of tennis. So thank you very much for having me. And I look forward to the further discussion. Hey, thank you so much, Yander. I mean, uh, the journey which started is still inspiring generations uh, since 1990. Uh, I mean, seven Olympics going to be your eight, and and I'm sure you it's going to be eight. There's no question mark about that. I'm sure it's going to be eight. Uh, but again, you mentioned about dream, which is so important. Any process it has to start with dream and patriotism. I mean, that's that was very very evident every time you you played the Davis Cup uh, against, irrespective of who it was against. Uh, and, and obviously, uh, the Olympics, absolutely brilliant. Uh, well, the next gentleman is uh, uh, is arguably one of the best drag flickers in the history of hockey. Uh, uh, somebody who's called as Boom Boom Bovlander, uh, Mr. Flores Bovlander, an Olympic champion, a legend, uh, a legend of the sport. And, and it's just amazing the amount of work that he's been doing, unearthing talent and looking after the underprivileged as well through his foundation, obviously with the help of uh, uh, Tata Steel. Uh, so it, it's, it's again a pleasure and an honor to uh, invite uh, Mr. Flores Bob Lander to, uh, to say a few words. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you very much for having me uh, in, this, uh, in this webinar. It's, um, uh, it's a privilege and um, it's good to, to have this uh, at the Olympic day. Also for me, the Olympic day and the Olympics, um, yeah, that make my life actually. Um, and in, at the Olympics, it's, it's like, like Goubertin said and, and, and earlier uh, it's, it's mentioned, um, it was not winning uh, or, or winning at the Olympics, it was participating at the Olympics. The Olympics is such a strange event actually. It's not like a World Cup. It's not like the Asian Cup or whatever. It's all these countries, all these different people, all together with the same goal. The same goal of doing the best you can do. And actually, uh, that's the only thing you can do. And that's the lesson I learned. I want, well, I wanted to be champion so many times, but I failed so many times. And uh, also that's mentioned before. All, the, all those who won, a lot of tournaments, they lost more tournaments than normally. Maybe a couple here, they won all, but uh, I lost more than I won, definitely. Although they say you're very successful, I still lost a lot of tournaments and I lost a lot of matches. And it's also said earlier, and it's all cliche, but you have to um, step up every time. And uh, in the end, what I wanted to say is um, I wanted to win, but you you, you just don't, don't know. Um, the only thing you can do is try as best as you can. Um, I was inspired by a lot of, actually my, my biggest uh, inspiration was a, a speed skater in Holland. Um, and uh, she won three gold medals, Yvonne van Gennep. And she won three medals and she was uh, on the square uh, celebrating. And I watched her and I saw these medals and I thought, yes, I want these medals as well. It took me uh, 10 more years to, to reach it, but um, it, it's, it's the motivation and the inspiration of all these, these, these former athletes, like we are here now, 
Um, and, and actually, that's also what I've tried to do uh, with the grassroots programs and um, with all these uh, coaching courses and, and the stuff we do is just to try to get all these young stars inspired because sports bring so much more than just winning and, and those medals. Um, it's, 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 it's a way of life for us in Holland. Um, as, as said in the beginning, uh, in, in, in India, sports uh, is some kind of luxury. In Holland, um, uh, understanding that the situation in Holland sometimes is, is different than in India, um, it's way of our life. Uh, many children, uh, most of the children, over 80% of the children do sports from the age of 8 till 14. So we have a lot of sports uh, in the youth. And I think that's the beginning of uh, the nurturing of, of, of great talents as well. And I must say that um, I've been involved in, in Indian hockey for... Of course, uh, when I when I played also, because I always loved to play in India, because the spectators, the, the whole structure or the, the lack of structure, whatever, it, but the whole country, we, I, I really loved. Uh, so I'm really happy to be back. But uh, for three years now, I'm, I'm uh, involved in, in grassroots hockey and in uh, hockey development through the academies in uh, Jharkhand and in Odisha. And it's just so good to see that we are a totally different country, but the joy and the the um, the motivation of all these young kids, what they also want to become the the, the new Indian stars, and uh, I really I love just just love to see them on the pitch and help the coaches to reach their dreams and and, and goals. Um, and to be honest, it's uh, Odisha. Um, if I compare it to all other countries where I've played and uh, also in it, within India, I have to admit that Odisha is, is a, a special state. Um, we had some uh, hiccups in the setting up some, some organization uh, in other regions in India, but in Odisha, they're pushing and they're pushing and they're really, really doing uh, a great job. So um, I bet the next generation of hockey players and all sports players, uh, sportsmen, will come from Odisha, definitely. And uh, hopefully, because we're also running an academy in Jharkhand, also some from Jharkhand, but definitely uh, from Odisha. So thank you for having me here. I'm looking forward to some other questions, but um, thank you from here and uh, enjoy the, the meeting. Thank you so much, Royce. I think, uh, as you mentioned, that sporting culture is such an important aspect of of a successful sporting country. And that's where I believe, as you mentioned, people like yourself and the other panelists are doing so much, especially the Odisha government. I mean, there are high performance centers. Abhinav's got one, you know, uh, Anil's got one in, in weightlifting there. There is uh, climbing, mountain climbing uh, foundation as well. JSW swimming high performance center. So I think the infrastructure and the culture is is getting there where, where it is, uh, you know, it, it is such an important aspect of, of uh, the growth of sports in the nation. And uh, moving forward, I mean, uh, uh, we've got Andrew Bobby George, who's, who's a world champion, who's a world athletic final champion. Uh, she kind of dominated her event, which is the long jump from 2002, three onwards to 2005, six. Uh, and also after her, uh, 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 her retirement, she's now helping the, the current athletes. So again, it's 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 an honor and a pleasure to introduce uh, Andrew Bobby George. And uh, yeah, a few words from you, Andrew, please. Um, good afternoon, everybody, uh, uh, dignitaries, uh, my fellow Olympians, uh, and all the sports lovers. Uh, I wish a very happy Olympic day. Uh, may each day of your life filled with uh, Olympic spirit and uh, values. As an ex-Olympian, uh, I believe uh, this is the right time to uh, extend our support to our next generation. Um, the experience what we gain through our journey. Uh, so it's time to uh, share with our next generation. Uh, I can say that uh, during my initial days, uh, I, have, um, I never got an opportunity. No one was there to uh, guide me or uh, show the path. Um, I think it took a long time, I, normal than usual, to reach to the international arena. 
I um, I can say that I wasted uh, most of my prime time running pillar to post uh, for support or finding any kind of other things. It was a big struggle fighting with all odds. Uh, yeah, it's true. I missed the Olympic medal badly, but I still believe I am an Olympic champion. You, uh, everyone knows it. It was just because of the Russian doping case. Um, nice. Now, uh, a lot of our uh, senior athletes uh, started our own academies, and our lucky kids are getting full support to fulfill their dreams. Um, from an athlete uh, athlete point of view, we athletes are considering uh, athletics. Uh, as the mother of all sports and one of the toughest sports in Olympic Games. Um, we are still waiting for uh, our maiden Olympic glory, uh, but going its right way, its right path. Um, many are already uh, put a mark in junior level, uh, but still a long way to go to senior level. Um, our history is already decorated with the World Championship medals, junior world record, uh, and uh, um, track and field goal, but still waiting for more, sure. Uh, I think we need a little more uh, precision in our planning. Uh, we'll definitely place us on the Olympic podium one day. Um, um, again, I, I'm also committed with the Anju Bobi Sports Foundation, uh, uh, waiting for 2024, maybe an Olympic medal from my work. <laughs> Um, I am also committed to so uh, chairperson of Athletes Commission and we are uh, trying to uh, uh, support our uh, next generation through uh, IOA. So that's from my side. Thank you very much for inviting me. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, uh, uh, Anju. And, and obviously, I mean, what you mentioned, such an important aspect and that's what I uh, kind of what I've observed is, in the end, it's about those one percenters. It's about, you know, your, your training, your nutrition, which actually differentiates between, uh, you know, the first and the second or the first and the fourth. It's not talent. Uh, and uh, thank you all uh, for sharing your views. Well, we'll uh, move into uh, the Q&A session. And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, all of you out there or the young guys out there, uh, if you've got any questions, please uh, throw at us, uh, which uh, Diksha and I will uh, will put it uh, across our panelists here. Well, I've got a few to start off with, and I know, uh, you know, you've, you've, uh, you've got to rush. So, but one of the things that, that occurs to me, and, and you've mentioned the fact that, yes, the Olympic is about taking part. It's about the movement. It's about, you know, experiencing it. But, I mean, all of you, the position that where you are right now, it's about perfection, right? It's about those one percenters and, and it's about high performance. So when is it that, you know, that, that just participation mentality has to move to, you know, trying to achieve perfection, trying to be as good as you can. And how important are those one percenters, you know, the nutrition, the, the training, uh, even sports medicine for that matter, you know, perfection. Right. It's about those one percenters. And yes, I think, uh, you know, the Olympics comes once in four years. But for us athletes, the Olympics comes every day. And it is about actually giving it your best every single day. Go out, going out there uh, and giving it your best when nobody is watching. Uh, and of course, it is, you know, participation is a big thing. But the bigger point that I was earlier wanting to make was about the struggle. Uh, but of course, it is, you know, you have to work towards trying to be the best that you can be. I think that is the, the underlying uh, thing that you have to keep in mind, that you have to be the best that you can be. At the end of the day, I mean, you, the athlete is answerable to himself. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of, uh, or at the, end of the cycle, that when, when the athlete looks himself or looks herself in the mirror and asks herself the question that, have you done your best uh, in terms of preparation for the Olympics? And if the answer is yes, you've done, you've done all it could, uh, all that you could do to, to enhance your chances to do well at the Olympic Games. The difficulty or the challenge with the Olympic Games is it comes so infrequently. It comes once in four years. Uh, and of course, when an event such as that happens only once in four years and you have only one shot at, at, at glory or, or at winning a medal, uh, you have to employ science. And I'm so glad that you asked me the question about that 1%. I think really the difference between 
winning at the Olympic Games and 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 and, and maybe coming close is that one percent edge uh, that you have to try and achieve, and that can only happen if you look at training in a very holistic way. If you uh, put in science, if you put in technology, if you put in engineering, if you put in analytics and you put in medicine in your preparation for the Olympic Games, that is when uh, um, you will just enhance your chances of uh, being the best that you could be on that particular, particular given day. And I think it is about really giving that 1%, of course, to our elite athletes, that is, that is a given. But really, I think if we have to make a big difference in Indian sport over the, over the coming years, it is about changing the ecosystem that surrounds Indian sport. And you have to start uh, employing all this science and you have to start employing all this technology, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera, uh, into, the, into grassroots level training. When you know, grassroots level athletes have access to uh, the best of science, the best of technology, when coaches uh, start to employ technology or start to employ science into their methodologies of training, that's where we'll really trigger change and that's where uh, the whole ecosystem of uh, Indian sport will will get to the next level. And that is a small element that I'm trying to personally work on. And I think it is a very crucial element uh, going forward if we have to um, reach our aspirations of being in the top 10 uh, at the Olympic Games uh, in, in LA. Um, we, we cannot ignore this factor and we cannot just limit it to, to, uh, to the elite. Of course, the elite have to get the best in the world. But I think that support and that scientific approach has to infiltrate down into the grassroots level. And that when that starts to happen, the whole ecosystem around sport changes. Um, we start to empower not just our athletes, but we start to empower the, the, the support system that surrounds our athletes. There is absolutely no reason why, why we cannot have top class, uh, world class coaches coming out of India or top class um, support staff coming out of India. And we have to, but for that to achieve that, we have to create frameworks to to empower the whole system. That's the whole system, not just surround, not just about the athlete, but the system that surrounds the athlete. Well, thank you so much. Uh, yeah, and, and and obviously you're working towards it with your high performance centers as well, which is such an important aspect of modern day sports. Uh, well, we've got a question from Leander, uh, which says. What does it take to produce the next Leander? Don't tell me what uh, Kapil Paji said uh, a few years ago when they asked when is the next Kapil Dev coming. But Leander, I'm just going to change it a bit and say uh, there are different avenues to reach your goal. Uh, the, one of the major uh, or, or important things to be successful in my observation has been how to control your emotions. Uh, somebody like you who's, who's emotion and it's, it comes out, you're very expressive. But how do you manage to control those emotions and also channelize those emotions in a positive way, which, which is very evident, but you've managed to kind of control them and channelize them. How do you do that? Great question. I think uh, it starts in the essence of mental fitness and emotional fitness. One of my uh, great mentors who I've studied a lot is Johan Cruyff. And he comes from the same land as uh, Mr. Bovalender. And, uh, it, as uh, Floris Bovalander sir just said, sport excellence is a way of life. Not many people have a chance to even take part in the Olympics and be an Olympian. And as Anju Bobby George so beautifully said, I consider myself an Olympic champion because anybody who takes part in the Olympics and is sitting in the dining room or at the opening ceremony will tell you how beautiful it is to be there. I would say 0.1 of the world's population would actually have taken part in professional sports. So when you look at sport, and this is the part that I'm so uh, appreciative of with uh, Vinil Krishnaji and with the infrastructure that they've created in Bhumaneshwar, is that when Anju Bobby George grew up, when I grew up playing sport, there was no real infrastructure. When you look at Abhinav and his excellence and expertise in shooting, there was no real infrastructure for sport, but now as you look at sport in India, there's wonderful infrastructure. But the real essence, I think, is not just about having a gym membership and getting physically fit. It's about emotional fitness. It's about mental fitness. It's about conducting uh, knowledge banks and portals and using technology, exactly like Abhinav also said, and spreading the word of knowledge. To me, to have uh, someone like uh, a Floris Bovalander 
uh, in our country to impart his rich knowledge to the other athletes. And I wish it wasn't just to hockey alone. I wish it actually that excellence of what Mr. Bobolander has created in a way of life can actually be imparted to all of our sporting community here. I think Alina Norman has broad shoulders to actually weigh the, the responsibilities of, of hockey in India, which is a national sport, um, is a big responsibility to make sure that India does well in the Olympics. But when it comes to mental toughness and emotional uh, uh, happiness, I think it is a discipline and it is a craft, very much like physical fitness, very much like stick work, very much like a serve or a, or, a, or a forehand and backhand in tennis, I think we Indians need to look at mental fitness and emotional fitness as a craft and as a subject that we work on. Up till only recently, mental fitness was more that you had to go to a, a, a therapist. It wasn't a sports mental toughness trainer. It was kind of looked down upon. It was a bit taboo. But as uh, uh, Mr. Bovlander will tell you, and as people playing in team sports will tell you, the individual excellence of a human being adds to the teamwork. The individual excellence of a human being adds to the teamwork. And hence, we have to focus on training our athletes as individuals. Each individual has a unique distinction amongst them. Each individual has a unique DNA amongst them. And hence, if you look at each individual cross board in our country, and nurture them and, and, and train, train them for excellence, eventually we will be a greater sporting nation and a healthier nation. As Indians, we are cerebral, we are intellectual, but we are still the number one country in the world in obesity. We're the number one country in the world in diabetes. And I think sport is a great vehicle to create a healthier India. All right, thanks, uh, uh, thanks Leander, about that. Uh, as you're talking about the culture and, and that is so important and uh, Floris, obviously you mentioned about the culture and that's one of the reasons why a country like Netherlands is, is so successful in all sports, not just hockey, in, in, not just field hockey, it's in, in all sports. And you know, part of, and, and thank God you're part of the system, the Indian system and, and trying to improve the culture as well. Uh, how much do you think uh, that you should, I mean, what age do you think you should, you start specializing in a sport. Do you believe in playing multiple sport to a certain age and then you specialize at 12, 13, or you believe in specializing at an early age? What would, what would be your take on that? Well, I, I definitely believe in multi-sports. It's, um, you have to develop multiple sports skills as well. Um, and that will bring you in the end, uh, like Leander, started with football and then uh, went up to, uh, to, to tennis on a late age, maybe. Um, so multiple sports definitely helps. Uh, but I just want to go back to, to Indian hockey first, because I think what, what Hockey India really did well the last 10, 15 years is really get uh, the people back into hockey. And uh, like mentioned earlier, that uh, Mr. Batra um, started with the Hockey India League. And I think that's a major... Um, uh, effort he put in, and 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 that's where hockey went back to India. And I think you, and that's also the Olympics. You need the heroes. You need the top uh, to inspire the youth. And that's why it, it's not only grassroots hockey. It's not only the top. It's all connected. So I think that's one of the, the key points you really need. Of course, you need the grassroots hockey, and you need grassroots sports, and you need multiple sports, and then you have to specialize. But you need from all the way up to the top, you need all these Olympians here. This is the, inspire, in the, the inspiration for the young kids and the motivation to become there. So it's, it's always a connection between, between all of them. And I'm really happy, and I just wanted to express that, that, that India is back. They don't have to be better than the Netherlands, but definitely a final should be good uh, someday. Um, so I'm... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm really happy to, 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 to be involved. And I think the culture of um, and, and infrastructure like we have in Holland here, yeah, it's just luxury. But we are a very small country. We're just, um, I think, half, half of Odisha. So it's, it's very small. But we have more than 1,000 uh, artificial uh, pitches. So at a very young age, we learn to play on artificial pitch, which is a different game than grassroots. Um, so for hockey, that's a big benefit for us. 
uh, and it's also uh, in, in coaching and everything. So we have a lot of experience. And I think if, if you look at Indian hockey and how to develop Indian hockey, and that's what Hockey India is, is doing at the moment, um, coaching the coaches, uh, make sure the coaches understand uh, modern hockey better and um, also hockey uh, or the Odisha government is trying to get more uh, artificial pitches in the, in, in the rural areas as well. I think that's that's the key and it's the key in Holland as well. We there, There's one more different uh, difference, uh, I'll come later, but the, the, the biggest difference in, in, in is, is facilities for young young stars and the, and the coaching. I think that's what why, why Holland is really good. Uh, and the other part is we also play just for fun. We all play for fun. We just play. Um, we have 250,000 hockey players uh, registered, um, but only 1% is trying to reach the top or playing on a high level. The rest is just enjoying, uh, enjoying sports. They, they try to win, but they don't want to be Oh, they might want to be, but they will never be uh, a champion, Olympic champion. It's just a small percentage. So we also in Holland have this club culture where you just, as a social game, you come together and you just play, whether it's cricket, whether it's hockey, whether it's tennis or all other kinds of sports, you just come together and play sports. And I think that's a, that's a great benefit. So the young stars, the children, they come together and, and just play. And I think... Uh, having fun and playing with each other, uh, whatever sports. And I come back then to, to the first question you said, multi-sports. So you just come together and you play football, cricket or whatever, just cultivate sports. And then some will have talents like uh, Leander has uh, some good genes also. You need some genes and uh, definitely a lot of hard work, but you need the good genes to become Olympian as well. Right. Thank you so much. Well, talking about infrastructure, that's somewhere, something that, has has been really really on, on on the rise here and especially i think uh in the state of orisha and the orisha government has done extremely well in creating those infrastructure creating that uh, that environment where where people can actually strive for uh, to be an olympian to not just be an olympian just to i mean win uh, medals in olympics and that's where uh, i would like to ask mr vinil krishna the question in terms of uh, as a state i mean in a country like ours there are a lot of important issues, very basic issues, which, which needs to be looked into. I mean, as a state, Odisha taking that initiative, uh, Mr. Vinil Krishna, uh, why, why where, where did that uh, thought process come from? Uh, as I was mentioning earlier, also the, uh, uh, if you look at uh, uh, India, we, we normally don't invest so much on sports and sports related infrastructure while, while coaching is a very important part. But at the same time, the infrastructure is also very important to actually inspire the, uh, uh, the budding uh, sports uh, uh, persons. So uh, while, while uh, infrastructure is also a focus for in, uh, in uh, Odisha, but the main focus with respect to why sports should be such an important part of a government activity. Uh, usually you will see that uh, most of the sports departments in the country in uh, various states are usually, if suppose I am posted to the sports department, probably I will look at it as a punishment posting. I will not look at it as something that I am really uh, proud of saying to somebody, my batchmates that I am, look, I am in sports department. They will probably think that uh, I am being shunted out to some other department uh, for some non-performance. But in Odisha, it is it is uh, it is uh, the focus of our honourable chief minister, which is actually creates that positive vibe across the uh, uh, across the departments, uh, which help us also in uh, uh, more than one way. Uh, so our chief minister's main uh, philosophy in this regard is that sports is just about youth. We are we are mainly looking at youth. We are looking at health. So if you look at youth, uh, it is about how do we productively engage the uh, youth? What is the other options if they don't get engaged into uh, something which is a physical activity, which is a uh, 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 kind of a uh, builds that uh, psychological strength also. In, if somebody is into sports, it's not only just about the physical, but it's also about the psychological. If they're not into sports, then probably they will, they will, they'll just be probably on the screen time. Probably they'll be on social media and social media is so full of uh, negativity. Uh, so, so in a way, it is about uh, how in a society, sports as a tool and as an instrument, 
uh, we try to build a not a more healthy society healthy more both in the physical form in a psychological form and also in as a as a bonding factor for the society if you look at the uh, why we do conduct uh, big events the big events actually bring together the entire state uh, irrespective of the differences of geography or difference of religion or differences in so many other fault lines that we have in the society uh, something like for example what when we conducted the uh, hockey men's world cup the way the entire entire state has come together and owned it up they were so proud of uh, about the event so that kind of a uh, uh, kind of a uh, uh, vibes in the society happens uh, with a more neutral events like uh, sports so i think there are there are a lot many advantages of uh, sports being a focus for uh, any state any country and uh, we are lucky to have that uh, chief minister like shri navin patnaik who understands it very well and uh, he drives the entire Uh, as in, as part of the sporting fraternity, I'm so glad to hear those words and and thank you and through you thank you to the whole Orissa government for taking the initiative. Uh, Diksha, I believe you have a question there. Yes, in fact, we have been having some very interesting questions on social media, and of course, uh, some of them you've already put forth. But there's uh, there's one that has come for uh, Dr. Batra. I think you should be putting that to him. Uh, so the question is this way: It comes from Sambit Mishra. Uh, there is a lot of news that sponsors are stepping back because of this pandemic. Even in IPL, many sponsors have. How do you see to change this thing in the post-COVID era and convince sponsors? to invest in the events when there's no surety of events taking place in the near future uh sambit mishra ji who asked this question that sponsors are stepping back look i won't put it like that they are stepping back the issue is that you had certain commitments towards them in 2020 there are events and all so the events are being rolled over now like i can give you example of hockey or international hockey or things that like whatever is happening or other sports also so they are rolling over a little bit i would say certain events which the sponsorship contracts were ending in 24 normally it's a four year five year cycle sponsorship contract so the sponsorships which were ending in 22 are rolling over to half of 23 or something the events that are promised will be covered you can say it's basically a little bit of deferment of payment and not cancellation of contract but if certain companies are packing up i don't know i have not seen because we deal always with the big partners and big sponsors so i have not heard any but it's definitely there is a little bit of delay in payment which does actually bother the nsfs well nsfs for their regular operations depend upon these funds so we are talking to government also government of india for some hand holding in this if they can support us in some way but there is a difficult situation but it's not a situation where you think that something is going bad or sports are going to go down no nothing of that sort and uh, as far as indian sports are concerned which are olympic sports and all government of india has promised all support not till uh, 2020 21 olympics but till commonwealth and asian games happening in 2022 and odisha is a big supporter of hockey so i know they have already said that hockey should not bother and no worries on that part but there are one or two things uh, dikha ji if you allow me which i heard during this conversation if you allow me if i can just touch them briefly yes sir yeah please i heard one or two comments from uh, mr chanakya choudhary from tata steel about uh, young talent not being spotted and florence also mentioning something about that uh, hockey sorry sports started at the age of 8 to 14 in holland and maybe kind of a luxury in india no i think because i am involved at all india level so i know what actually is happening due to this khelo india youth games khelo india university games all these things which are happening so under this program now we have a talent hunting for 2028 olympics and 2024 olympics so maybe everybody is not aware but that has already started there are academies coming up by sports authority of india along with state governments where those uh, children who are selected are going to be based and it's going to be a residential academy with where i think archery selecting some uh, badminton i would say all sports which have olympic potential are selecting uh, athletes a worry is that if we want to be in the top 10 in 28 then there are sports like athletics which has started doing well we have 54 medals in athletics you multiply by 3 they go up to much more then swimming has 46 we don't even get a single medal till today not a single swimming athlete from india has qualified for olympics the two which go every year one male and one female are by default 
because you are participating at you get quota of two. So they go under that. Fencing has 22, not even a single athlete. Uh, uh, gymnastics at 28, we only had one athlete and no one after that. Cycling, no one. Judo, no one has 22, 18 medals. The only sport which did well is shooting, which has about 21, 22 medals, and we are competing for each and every medal in Tokyo. So, I can that sports are being developed. That uh, thing that there are no, there is no that the pyramid structure is not being built. That is history now. For the last two, three years, this is very much in place. And now the government, which has started a new thing, uh, is the athletes themselves can start their academy. And they need to have about 40 athletes in that, 40 young athletes. Government of India will fund them 5 lakhs as a startup and 5 lakhs as their salary, out of which 3 lakhs they can take as salary and 2 lakhs they can use for infrastructure development. So they're going to employ 1,000 athletes like this in this year. This year was supposed to start, but maybe this may have a rollover to next year. So it's not that the whatever opportunities you have making a career in sports after that and the coaches can charge the athletes also for training. So, so many things are coming up. Infrastructure is being built up. Things are getting into shape. And when we say that we are going to try to be in top 10, let me assure you this is a serious thing we are planning. We are host planning to build for 32 Olympics. Odisha could be one of the potential centers. Wow. All these all these things are happening. No, Odisha is very much in my radar. So, if I don't think Odisha, when I talk about sports, then I think I would be doing injustice to what I'm saying. And before I conclude, I'd like to thank Honorable Chief Minister, who's always been, Mr. Naveen Patnaik, has always been very supportive. And Mr. Karthik and Pandyan, who himself is an athlete, 1500 meters he used to run. So he's always very supportive. Thanks to him. Thanks to Mr. Vishal Dev, Vinil Krishna, and entire Odisha State Government. Tata Group for uh, support of their hockey academy. And I don't know if I remember correctly, but I, I think I do. That Naval Tata ji was the first president of independent India of hockey, if I'm not mistaken. So, Tata's have a special connection with hockey. So, I hope their support for hockey continues. And we look up to better opportunities, not only for hockey, but many other sports from Odisha. And for sponsorship, I'll again conclude, don't worry. If anything goes wrong, we have Odisha to support us always. <laughs> well, Dr. Batra, administration is a thankless job. I mean, you can't keep everyone happy. <laughs> this is what I've observed over the years. But actually, I mean, phenomenal work that has been done uh, in the last few years, at least. And with your kind of experience over the years, I'm sure, uh, you know, things are only looking better from here on. Uh, talking about uh, sponsorships, I think that's such an important aspect. And I'm not going to... Uh, I, I'm not going to call you a sponsor, Mr. Chaudhary. I'm never going to call Tata's because they are partners. They're not sponsors. They've, they've been an investor in sports over decades now. Uh, and, and that's such an important aspect because you look at sports differently, right? You look at investing in sports, investing in sports person, not the usual, uh, uh, usual way. I mean, uh, where does that philosophy come from? And, and is, is, is that how you look at uh, sports? I mean, not just producing sports person, but also producing human beings uh, and good human beings through sports. Pradeep, uh, first of all, Bataji, I did mention that the difference we found uh, with others countries which are doing well in sports is that they start early. I didn't say that we don't do it in India. And you are absolutely right that in the last few years, some of the residential academies which are coming up are actually catching the children pretty young. And if they are taken in for sports at an early age. Obviously, we will be able to match the skills and talent outside and compete in the international arena. So that's where I want to mention it. Uh, so coming back, uh, yeah, so I think, uh, as I said, these are phases in one corporate's life. So initially, if you come over to Jamshedpur, we'll show you that how many awardees we have over a period of time, whether it's Arjuna and other awardees. And they were individual individuals who were supported from time to time. And that's where the, uh, the whole thing changed. And we said that instead of just supporting individuals for individual uh, medals, why not create academies where you have a larger uh, section of pickup from the society community and ensure that you get the cream on the top and they can then compete with regional, national, and international levels. And that's where the whole system has gone in. How this philosophy has come, I suppose this philosophy has been from the very beginning there in the uh, Tatas and uh, what 
Batra ji just mentioned about Mr. Naval Tata. That was a Sir Naval Tata. He was surely the uh, first uh, gentleman to be the chairperson for the Olympics committee here, and uh, he also supported individual athletes in that hockey team, which went for the Olympics for the first Olympics from here from India. So I think it has come easy for Tata Group. It has come as a legacy. So it was not that someone had to decide or someone will now decide to do or something or not to do something. Uh, it's it's just a direction which has been given, and it's like a vision of a company. So it just comes with it. Uh, yes, we at times do revisit revisit the the whole thought process. Like I said, infrastructure was brought in at a at a different stage. and now we are also so i i must take a little time off and talk about what orissa has done i think uh, what uh, mr vilik krishna was mentioning is right that you have the uh, the world class infrastructure built uh, which also happened in commonwealth games in delhi but thereafter there was a stark difference between what happened with the infrastructure in delhi to what is happening in orissa so it's one step that you build the infrastructure and the other step is how do you ensure that it continues to uh, you know be utilized properly to deliver the outcomes for which that infrastructure is built and i think orissa that way has thought through a sustainable model and it's not only hockey where we are connected or it's swimming for someone else and you know the hpc and stuff like that so various corporates have joined hands as partners to ensure that one sport is taken forward by them because one corporate will not be able to do justice to everything and by the whole way that the method has been put in the infrastructure gets utilized it gets so it will not decay i think from a tata steel perspective we been always there for a long term play and what batra ji just mentioned the sponsors can come in and go uh but i think you should have a plan for a longer period of time surely our budgets are going to be under some stress for the time being surely we'll also have to look at how do we cut costs and you know look at what are the things we want to continue with and what are the things we can defer for the moment but i think this is just a dip this happens to be a worldwide phenomenon on a, a health and a medical side otherwise economic cycles we have gone through every one decade in the steel industry so we tend to go up with the cycle and also come down with the cycle we by the end of it we learn how to live with it so i think that's what we will say we are here for a longer term as partners as you rightly mentioned and that's where it is deep i have just last one point that i have another meeting at 5:30 so yeah. if, if it's okay that in about few minutes i'll disconnect thanks a lot sure absolutely absolutely sir and uh, thank you again thank you for joining us and and your your you know encouragement over the years and and it still goes on uh okay uh, quickly to uh, to anju i mean uh, obviously the best thing the best feeling is to win a world championship or an olympic medal i think the second best would be to to produce somebody who would actually win it and you're you're doing that right now uh you know and and i'm sure you're very passionate about it and please share your your thoughts of of you know the passion of producing i mean that's also such an important aspect i mean we mentioned about infrastructure but also the coaching side of thing and you're uh, hands on uh producing the next uh, generation of athletes uh please share your uh, your thoughts about coaching and and the passion to produce the next olympian or next olympic olympic champion anju sorry okay yeah. uh, well uh, after my career uh, i took a long break uh, uh, and uh, then i decided to do something for our sports uh, so actually i was really lucky that uh, bobby he was my coach during my career and i can say that he was he is um, one of the best coach from india uh, who produced a world championship medalist so um, th this is a kind of uh, uh, athlete and coach uh, uh, supporting together for a cause good cause so we started anjubobi sports foundation in bangalore it is struggled a lot as i did in my initial stages uh, but now we got uh, uh, some support from government so we are starting our uh, synthetic track 
in Bangalore. Uh, we already got 13 athletes, 13 women athletes, uh, young athletes from all over India, all over uh, country. And uh, one of our younger kid, uh, Shaili Singh, she's already uh, showing her, her talent. She's world number, I can say that she's world number one because the one who is standing in the front of uh, it's, uh, Rishin, so she is uh, now standing uh, second. So we are hopeful of getting a medal from her in 2024 Olympics, and we are aiming much more from our academy. Uh, but definitely, uh, money is uh, the big um, thing. Uh, we are yet still trying to get that because uh, we need we need a lot of things, not only track, a lot of support uh, we need, and we are trying for that. But uh, this is my word. Uh, definitely an Olympic medalist from my academy because I lost very badly. Uh, but we definitely will produce an Olympic medalist from our academy. And uh, this is my dedication to my country. Well, keeping our fingers crossed, absolutely. Why not? Uh, well, thank you for answering those questions. Well, uh, finally, we move, move over to Elena. Elena Norman, who's the CEO of Hockey India. And uh, obviously, hockey being such an integral part of our, our nation, the national sport, uh, I mean, we dominated for so many years. But finally, uh, finally, after a few years of transition, it's looking good. The men's hockey team, the women's hockey teams qualified for the Tokyo Olympics. Uh, well, to talk, talk uh, more about the, the whole process, uh, we would, uh, I would like to invite uh, Elena, if you could uh, share the uh, you know, the plans and, and, and the roadmap uh, moving ahead and also the process uh, where uh, uh, the, the reason why Indian hockey is doing so well. Hi, Deep. Hi to everyone else um, who's here today. So, so thanks. Happy Olympic Day. I think for, for India, for Hockey India particularly, we've started in 2009 and we had that stage there was a lot of work to be done and one of our focus was obviously on bringing hockey back to India at, the, at that stage we wouldn't have been able to see hockey in the newspapers on the website on the internet on tv people weren't talking about the sport at all so it was really important for us to bring back the sport and give people that touch point um where they could um, see where, where hockey was. That was a lot about bringing uh, the sport back to India and having events in India. So I think that has been a really strong catalyst for success of our national teams. Um, we're very proud at where both our men's and women te teams are right now. Um, they will probably tell you also that, um, like us, they're focused on 2021. That, you know what I mean? They're aiming for a medal uh, men and women. So uh, we're very proud of, of where they are right now. And uh, for our point of view, we just want to go from strength to strength. So again, Hockey India started in 2009 and, and each Olympics, we're just getting better and better. We haven't perfected it yet, but hopefully with that extra one year now that we have to, to for all of us to prepare the teams, um, they're going to go into 2021 Tokyo as best as possible. Um, I also obviously want to mention, uh, you know, in Olympic Day and how important Olympic Day is to, to Hockey India and to our member units. And we're kind of avid believers in the Olympic movement. And we use this occasion to kind of spread awareness, just not just about hockey, but just sports in general. And, and I think this year it, it's kind of an apt discussion that we, we're you know, I mean, in the middle of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic that we're celebrating Olympic years, I really think this year there's a deeper significance because we, we truly need to um, reflect on the power of sport and how it brings out the best in people and for them to overcome adversities as well. And I think Olympics truly is a representation of the sporting excellence that, that humans and individuals can achieve. So it's great that we can celebrate um, Olympic Day today with all of us, but also have all the great um, Olympians on the panel that are sharing their stories that, that are truly remarkable and just show that how an individual can overcome anything to achieve success. So thanks very much. I think uh, I just also want to kind of highlight um, and thank 
the Odisha State Government, particularly the Department of Sports and Youth Services. You know, I mean, I'm really heartened to hear that uh, they want to continue supporting sports post the COVID-19 um, uh, situation, especially at grassroots, because we know from our own experience with working with Odisha State Government that, you know, I mean, they've really helped us take our sport to the next level. And I'm quite confident that, you know, I mean, when they set their mind to doing something and if they're going to really set up um, this infrastructure and support system and this ecosystem at a grassroots level, that these these are the foundations for our uh, sport to have success at in the international environment and particularly, you know, in the Olympic Games and, and our journey towards a, a, um, achieving more medals for the country. So uh, deep at some stage, I know I'm going to say kind of the concluding uh, remarks and thank everyone. So, so I'm ready whenever you are. Well, I'm ready, Elena, and I'm so glad you, you, you're you part of uh, Hockey India because obviously I know you for a while and, I'm, I, and, I, and I know how hardworking and, and you know, focused you are, you are. And I'm so glad that uh, you're part of the Hockey India, uh, you know, community and the fraternity. Uh, and I'm sure hockey's uh, under, I mean, with you and uh, Dr. Batra being there, I'm sure uh, we'll, we'll get back to our golden days again. Uh, well, thank you again, uh, personally speaking, uh, just being part of this event. Uh, as I mentioned, it, it's a fanboy moment for me. Uh, again, thank you everyone for, uh, for uh, you know, answering all the questions and being here. I'll now hand over to uh, Diksha. Uh, Diksha, if you can uh, take over, please. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Deep, for uh, uh, digging deep into all this discussion and actually making it so lively <laughs> and, and interesting. And yes, we would like to thank all our eminent panelists who were here with us. Uh, thank you so very much. But I would like to inform all the audience who are watching us live now that we have one more session and we'll just take a minute. Uh, so we'll just request, uh, you know, our, uh, you know, our panelists for the next session which is on importance of drag flicks and penalty corners in modern day hockey. They'll be joining us uh, and uh, so we'll just take a minute for the transition. So I request the audience to stay back for this session and would like to once again, thank all our panelists and Deep as well for this wonderful first session as part of the Olympic Day celebrations. Thank you everyone. Thank you very much and nice meeting you all. Thank you. Thank you everyone, God bless. I'll be back. Floris, do, do you think you could do uh, eight Olympics? Sorry, I was on mute. Um, that's quite a lot, isn't it? Incredible. It's incredible. It, it, great, a great story you had. Fantastic. Yeah. Really, really inspirational. 
I think the um, are we still live? This guy, you you're on mute. You're on mute. It seems like we are on live. No, it's good. Um, they have good inspiration always, and I think the the Indians always nice. They can they can speak in uh, very inspirational as well. Hi everyone, Diksha, we get started. Yes, yes. Uh, am I audible now? Yeah, yeah. All right. Yes. Now we will check with everyone, yes. Yes, yes, yes. So I think uh, once again, uh, we'd like to welcome uh, uh, all our panelists for session two. This is uh, importance of drag flicks and penalty corners in modern day hockey. And we are happy that uh, our audience is still with us. So warm welcome to them once again. Joining us uh, from the last session would be hockey Olympian and gold medalist, Mr. Floris Boblander. He's with us uh, as uh, well for the second session. And if I'm not mistaken, he used to be called the drag flick dinosaur at some point of time. Yes. And uh, for this session, we also have with us Mr. Graham Reed, head coach of the hockey team a former Australian field hockey player who played as a defender and midfielder for the Australian national team, was a member of the team that won the silver medal at the 1992 Summer Olympics in Spain. We have with us uh, Mr. Dilip Turki, hockey Olympian, former India captain, best known for his penalty corner hit, represented India in 1996 Atlanta, 2000 Sydney and 2004 Athens Olympics. Also a former Rajya Sabha MP working as chairman of Hockey Promotion Council, Odessa, right now, is a recipient of Padma Shri and Arjuna Awards. From the Indian men's hockey team, we have two very talented players and Olympians, Mr. Shijay's PR, a goalkeeper and former captain as well. And we also have Mr. Harmanpreet Singh, who plays as a defender for the Indian national team. We also have with us a very young and versatile Indian woman hockey player and Olympian, Ms. Monica Malik, she represented India in the 2014 Asian Games, was part of the bronze medal winning squad. And yes, is part of the team that has qualified for Tokyo Olympics now 2021. So I welcome all of them. And of course, last session we had Deep who made it really lively. We're thankful to him for that. And now joining me for this session is Mr. Raju Singh, Project Director, Naval Tata Hockey Academy. Besides this academy, he is also headed admin and operation of Jamshedpur Football Club, which is again a 100% owned subsidiary of Tata Steel, is also an M panel BCCI match referee. So I request uh, Mr. Rajiv to take this forward from now. Thank you. Thank you, Diksha. Uh, thank you for the lovely introduction of all the elite and luminaries on the panel. In fact, uh, I'm amazed. I'm amazed to have such great names on one platform. And I think this is most befitting, as Deep also mentioned, this is most befitting for, for a day like Olympic Day celebration. And uh, to say the least, you and me are the odd ones here. So, but we still need to do justice. So we will work towards it. Uh, you know, uh, with the very serious stuff happening in the session one, what we have now is actually having a little focus on hockey, hockey being the subject here because it's, it's obviously one of uh, our best sports uh, in the country and obviously favorite, favorite sport in many ways. We've done so well. We've heard Dr. Batra, uh, you know, stating all the plans we have. And it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful time while COVID is taking us back. But I think our spirits are alive and we, we, we are working towards every little that we can give to be the, the best participated country in the coming Olympics. So coming to the session we have, this is obviously on a specific topic, as I, as we mentioned, that is going to be the importance of penalty corner and drag flick uh, in modern day hockey. Hockey has certainly evolved, and that is what I'm not going to talk about, and that's where the experts are all there. So what we're going to start with, uh, just a quick flow, we're going to have a small Q&A format 
introduction of uh, all the luminaries present here, followed by dedicated topics on uh, penalty corner defense and penalty corner attack, which will always obviously cover the drag play. Now, having said that, we know the kind of audience who's watching us, listening to us today, they're going to benefit out of this because there's a lot of talent which is uh, in the bargain here, and they are all looking forward to this session. So first of all, let me open it up uh, with uh, Flores. Uh, uh, Flores, as an Olympian and a gold medalist, how important is hockey to you, and how, how has hockey benefited you and your life? Ooh, uh, how much time do I have? Um, no, I think yes. uh, hockey, hockey um, I'm still involved in hockey. Uh, I enjoyed playing the game when I was young uh, with my friends and um, I'm still very much involved in hockey, but um, it, it shaped me. Um, in, 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 I think the most important part is that um, I learned to, to, to dream and to 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 work hard on to work on hard to work hard to uh, to reach those uh, th those dreams, um, whether you reach it or not. But it's it's um, that I allow myself to dream and 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 go for it. Um, when you're young, uh, of course, you're inspired and motivated by uh, by others. Um, but I had a dream just to, to participate on the, at the Olympics, not even winning, but participating on the Olympics. And um, it, 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 it just takes uh, a lot of effort to, to come there. Um, on the other hand, I always enjoyed it. And uh, one of my, um, the main lessons is I, I tried hard to reach the top, but if you do not enjoy the game, uh, enjoying, the road to uh, success, then you don't don't start even. Um, it's just being with friends together, uh, working hard, doing your all the best you can. Um, listen to others who know better. Um, don't be, um, yeah. Listen to others. Listen to coaches because, in a way, you think you know everything, but later on you notice some coaches, some other players, they know better. Uh, if you listen to them and take their tips as well, uh, that will that will help. And also in life, um, the life lessons I learned is uh, to 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 cope with um, with losing. Um, step up again. Try again. Why did I lose? Um, normally, it's if you lose because of uh, bad preparation, then next time be prepared in a better way. If you lose. And you did all good. Some are better. Then it's fine. But uh, to step up after a defeat, after um, things that happen, I think that's also in life. Uh, whether it's in business, in in life with families, you we all uh, have our tough moments. And just step up again and make something out of your life. Uh, I think that's the main goal, the main um, lesson I learned from uh, from hockey. Rajiv, you're still on mute. Uh, sorry. Uh, so I, this is brilliant, actually. Because anybody listening to you would uh, really benefit out of the kind of expression it is and the kind of stuff which you just mentioned. But, you know, this is what experience is all about. This is what uh, you bring to table. But uh, going forward, let me uh, also get another not contemporary in the sense in the same era, but uh, close to you, <laughs> your era, which is Dilip Tilki, our very own Dilip Tilki. So Dilip, for you, uh, you were high, Dilip. So you were one of the highest. Call, yeah, you were one of the highest call players in Indian hockey. What is one of your most favorable moment and goals? Uh, and then we move on to the obviously the, the the chosen topic, and then your specialization there, which is where I will invite Graham to take it forward. But just to just to get a little uh, input from you, so what has what is one of your most favorable moments and goals as a hockey player? Mm. Hi, Sergi. and uh, said has advised me to speak in. I think there is 
يسمى مجھے یاد ہے جو ہمارے ٹیم کے کیپٹن تھے دھن راج پنڈے جی اور 32 ایئر کے بعد ہم نے ٹرائی بریک کر کے جی ڈی میچ جیتا وہ کافی ہمارے لیے میرے لیے میمبر میچ رہا ہے اس کے بعد 2000 اولمپک سیڈنی اولمپک جہاں پولینڈ کے ساتھ لیسٹ میچ کے دوران میں نے ایک گول کیا تھا کیونکہ اس میچ میں ہمیں جیت کی ضرورت تھا اور میں نے صرف ایک گول شاکن کے کر پایا تھا اور وہ میچ وان ون گول سے ڈرا ہوا اور ہم لوگ کوالیفائی کر لیے لیکن وہ میچ کا جو گول تھا کبھی امپورٹنٹ میرے لیے میں مانتا ہوں جی جی سیٹھی جی Thank you. So, uh, you know, Dilip, having said that, I would first bring on uh, uh, Graham Reed, who's, who's going to take it uh, through with the rest of the presentation. And this is where I think you and Flores will make a big contribution to get started in terms of what it used to be as a penalty corner and drag flick at the times you guys have played to the modern day, day hockey. So this is uh, it's very important because obviously there would be certain semantics involved in it. So let me bring uh, Graham. I welcome Graham Reed. Uh, Graham, welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Yeah. So over to you to take it with uh, Flores and Dilip. Yeah. Um, look, it's a really good question. Um, I think one of the things, and, and it's interesting that, that Flores is, is with us here today because... Uh, When I was playing uh, back in the 80s, uh, we always used to feel that, that we, would, uh, we, we would play better than Holland, you know. Uh, this is from an Australian point of view. And, and, uh, and, and it would come to the end of the game and we were 1-0 down, you know, and, and, uh, or 2-1. Or, or and I think, you know, you, you go back and you look and you think, well, of course, you know, they, they had players like Floris and Taco and um, Taco van der Honnet, who were fantastic Uh, penalty corner flickers and in those days hitters as well Flores was a, was a both uh, he and Taco actually were, were probably together uh, one of the uh, or, or both were the uh, the instigators of the drag flick and, and it's funny because I spent the last two years in Holland with with Taco as assistant coach to Holland and when you look at the techniques that, are, that these boys do now and look back at when when Taco was doing it it, it has changed uh, dramatically and and uh, and now as they can really generate some power um, but uh, yeah i think from a point of view of of the importance of the of the penalty corner and of course the the drag flick i think i think it's always been there it's always been a really important part of the game and uh, i think if you look at in the last uh, you know 20 years and 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 australia has started to come up uh, in into world uh, you know n- number one over the years uh, finally realized that that penalty corners were were very important and and we spent a lot of time doing it i don't know floris what 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 are your thoughts but no i got I, of course the same i'm from a generation the same generation as you are of course uh, but also in holland we always have had a good penalty corner. Before my days, it was Thies Kraus, uh, Paul Ditchens. We always had some uh, some good penalty hitters and la- later on some uh, drag flickers. I think even now uh, the rest is picking up. Uh, in our days, we had uh, Germany, Holland, uh, who really had a good uh, penalty corner. But a penalty corner is just decisive for games. Um, if you don't have the good, the right um, a penalty corner defense or offense then you will never uh, become champion in the end uh, we won the world cup uh, in 1990 in lahore and 
just because we, we made 100% of the, the, the penalty corners in the semifinals and the finals. We played better than Pakistan or we played better than uh, Germany, but not really better. But you, we just make those goals. And in the end, that counts. Um, and it's always in, the, in discussion. It's always been in discussion uh, how much influence does the penalty corner have uh, on the game. But it's not that easy to get uh, a penalty corner. You only uh, get a couple, uh, maybe three to, to seven, or easy games maybe a bit more. But three to seven attempts is not that much in, in a game. So um, uh, there is a change. I've seen a change uh, over the years in techniques. But in the end, it's still very important. It's, it's part of the game. I, I, li I like it, not, not because of uh, my history. But I think it also... Uh, it's quite understandable for, for spectators as well. Hockey is not, on television, it's quite difficult to, to, to follow. If you look at cricket, you will know cricket, and the, the statistics, uh, the slow-mos and everything, it's quite easy. And actually, uh, a penalty corner is also a standard situation where everybody can understand, okay, there, there's an injector, there's a stopper, and then you push the ball as hard as you, you flick the ball as hard as you can uh, in, uh, to the, into the goal. So it's also easy to watch and, and, and it gives a lot of excitement as well. There's a penalty corner. So, oh, everybody's watching. The stadium is watching. Yeah, everyone is getting a bit nervous. Uh, defense and uh, attack. So, uh, yeah, I just like, the, I like it as part of the game. And um, although we have seen the big change in, um, in, in technique, um, they say I was the best drag flicker. Uh, Graham, you know that's not, definitely not true. Uh, I could hit the ball pretty good um, and I could flick a bit. And if you are a good hitter, then the goalies went down in those days. They went down, just went down. So your flick did, did not have to be the best one. So just over the goalie and that's it. But uh, my direct flick is definitely nothing compared to these, uh, these youngsters here or the, the youngsters who are uh, having a perfect direct flick at the moment. Yeah. So, uh, you know, from that point, uh, Flores, uh, on curiosity's sake, uh, I wish to ask, you know, there were times uh, in your era when the teams used to have one odd specialist in, in, a, in a drag flicking capacity or maybe as penalty corner specialist, other than obviously as a teamwork, as an injector, stopper. And to the times today when um, most advanced teams, most top teams have got, you know, multifarious options. They've got skill set to the best. One replaces another within the same set of team. So, uh, isn't that a great transition from what it used to be to to to, to modern day hockey? Well, you can ask the, the others as well, but I think uh, still um, if you only have the one very best off. Uh, there's always one uh, direct player who is who is better than others in every team, and even some of the teams. And, and I think in India, you're pretty lucky with a couple of really good drag flickers. And it's just, uh, I think it's uh, it's about training and about education uh, and, and knowing that you need good drag flickers. So I think in, in, in India, uh, you're doing okay. But even in Holland now, nowadays we have one, which is okay, but he's 30, I think about 30 years old now, Ming von der Weerde. So he is, he is over his top already. And we don't have a lot of, Drag flickers around. It's it's just a specialism, which is not uh, somehow not that easy. Uh, everybody understands that it's important, but even here uh, and, and nowadays, to be the best of the world uh, in the drag flicks uh, is is you only have one or two. You only have one or two. Um, so yes, it changed a bit, but not that much because the, the best are still the best and you still have one or two best in the world. And uh, hopefully not for Holland. Uh, India will have one of the best in, uh, in the world. Yeah, wonderful, wonderful words there. Uh, Graham, for you, uh, as an Olympian and a coach, uh, you, you've uh, coached the best teams in the world, Australia, Holland, and now India. So what's, uh, what's your favorite moment as a player and as a coach? There could be a favorite moment for you. Yeah, uh, probably uh, for me, Barcelona. Uh, okay. the, the, whole, the whole Olympics concept is, uh, especially on this Olympics day, it's a good time to, to talk about it. But 
you know, uh, Barcelona, for, for those of you who, uh, who have been there in that city, it became Barcelona that we know today because of those Olympics and uh, how such a fantastic uh, place that it, it, that it now is, um, I think really is, is a credit to the Olympic Games of, of 1992. And um, we, we were lucky enough to win a silver medal at those at those Olympics. And certainly, as a player, for me, that was a that was a fantastic uh, ability. We we won four or five champions trophies uh, at, at the same time. And uh, but anyone who plays hockey understands that that the Olympics is the is the pinnacle. And uh, and and to to achieve a gold medal like like Florison, um, who's with us today, um, it's an incredible thing. And 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 the one thing that I. I I still talk about today a lot with with our guys um, is is that it's very 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 difficult to win an Olympic gold medal. You know, a lot of things have to go right to to be able to achieve that, and uh, and, and everyone is there trying to do their best. Um, so so that and and probably as a coach, it, it, it was the two World Cups, uh, one in one in um, in Delhi, which is in 2010, and the other was. Uh, was in 2014 uh, in front of 17,000 uh, Dutch Dutch fans, and and uh, that, that, that was an incredible uh, moment. But yeah, that was a good game for you then. <laughs> Super, I know, I know. Uh, so moving on to another legend who we have amongst us, uh, Shrijesh. Uh, so Shrijesh, welcome. And uh, just a question, quick question for you, as an Olympian and longtime goalkeeper for India. You have seen great success with the national team. What is being part of the Indian national men's team? You forged some great friendship and connections on the way, only developing and improving yourself. What do you, what do you, what do, you do to contribute to your success? Uh, hi, all. Uh, thank you very much, brother. It's a, uh, yeah, definitely it's been almost 16 years for me with this team. So, uh, that experience helping me a lot to perform in this uh, in this time, and definitely uh, that is one of the best part of myself, which I feel like uh, to face all the tougher situation and the odd situation to overcome that. And uh, yeah, uh, for me, uh, the best memory is 2014 Asian Games finals, which we won uh, against Pakistan in a shootout. So uh, in hockey match, as everyone knew that the, the only credit goes to goalkeeper when, when it comes to shootout. And that is the only time we can remove our helmet and celebrate it. Like, yeah, we are the champion and we are the reason behind this victory. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, for the goalkeeper's perspective view, I think it's most important part is that sharing the experience. And uh, that is what I do with all, all my, uh, all, with, with my seniors and even with my juniors. So uh, in 2013, where, where, where I got my uh, where I got my scientific training from one of the goalkeeper coach, uh, he's, from, he's a South African. So, and uh, that's the time I realized that I learned a lot of wrong things till that that time. And from there onwards, I tried to change my my basics and I, I tried to learn the new new techniques. And from there onwards, I always try to teach the youngsters what I learned from him, and which I which I found it like yeah, that is the right thing for the modern hockey. So. Uh, yeah, uh, the best part is that the friendship with the, the in the world, the, the other goalkeepers is always help help you to improve yourself. Even after a match, I think Jab Jab Shockman, everyone knew him. He is one of my good friend now. So he, whenever he watch my match, he always texts me, "Sri, uh, you done wonderful job." And he says that, "Okay, that area, I think like you you could have done like this." So that kind of information is always help us to improve myself, and. That is the same thing what I'm doing with my juniors. I mean, Krishna and Suraj is there with me. So whenever I feel like, okay, these guys are doing something wrong, I always point out that, okay, Krishna, yeah, Suraj, you need to improve here. Change that thing. So that is going to uh, improve yourself. So now I originally stage that it's a give and take policy, which, which help us to improve together for the team. Super, super. In fact, what you have just mentioned is all displayed when you're on the field. Uh, the, uh, the, the players looking up to you, your own fellow goalkeepers being guided by you and, and you know, the words of wisdom from you always helps them. I think we have seen, uh, uh, you know, a tremendous amount of uh, change and development in the young goalkeepers coming up. And thanks to you. And you've also won an India, cap, uh, India captain, being an India ca uh, captain. So that also, you know, in the leadership position, 
so t- handling the team knowing the nuances and knowing the uh, you know the moods of each and every players you have played with so i think it's phenomenal and uh, that's where we all look forward i have watched some of your games in the last world cup and even the the pro league it's been phenomenal i think i love the moment though it should not get to go on the shootout you know the way you handle it it's 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 unbelievable i mean i the positioning and all those factors which comes into hockey and particularly for the goalkeeping it's amazing and uh, well done and uh, thank uh, you lots and lots of best wishes uh, so we move uh, to harman uh, harman preet who's also with us so harman uh, just a quick one for you as an upcoming drag flicker who was your inspiration to start and who have you seen as a mentor all along the road so far uh, hello everyone uh first of all ke uh, during the junior period jab maine start kiya to of course experience kam tha to dheere dheere step by step improve karta gaya main apne aap ko then jab main senior team mein aaya so main in sabhi apne seniors se mila rupender pal aur us kam jugraj jugraj singh bhi hamare jo coach the aur chris hai to ye ragu ragunath aur jo hamare jo seniors the उनके साथ एक, एक उनके साथ एक प्रैक्टिस करना टूर्नामेंट्स खेलना तो वो बहुत सारी चीजें हैं जो मेरे को मोटिवेट करी हैं तो लाइक गोल कीपर जैसे श्री भाई ने बोला कि अब वो जस्ट अपने जूनियर्स को बताते हैं नॉट के ओनली गोल कीपर को बताते हैं तो कोई भी मिस्टेक कर रहा है तो ये बहुत मतलब बोल देते हैं कि अगर आप यहाँ पे इम्प्रूव कर सकते हो तो सीनियर्स में अपने रूपेंद्र पाल को बोलूंगा कि उनसे मैंने बहुत कुछ सीखा है उन्होंने मेरे को बहुत अच्छी से गाइड किया है तो उनकी वजह से जितने मेरे सीनियर्स हैं इनकी हेल्प की वजह से मैं आई थिंक थोड़ा अपना बेस्ट कर पाया हूं ब्रिलियंट एंड आई थिंक रुपिंदर पाल फील्ड पे जब होते हैं तो ऐसा लगता है एक पहाड़ वहां है ऑलरेडी आपको सेफ गार्ड करने के लिए सो ही देयर इज अ देयर इज अ माउंटेन फॉर यू प्रेजेंट देयर सो आई थिंक रुपिंदर हैज बीन अ ग्रेट ग्रेट यू नो टैलेंट फॉर इंडिया एंड वेरी वेल सेड अरमन सो मोनिका जो हमारे साथ जुड़ी हुई हैं तो मोनिका आपका भी बहुत बहुत वेलकम सो आपके लिए मेरा ये क्वेश्चन रहेगा कि एज पार्ट ऑफ इंडियन वेमेन टीम दैट हैड द ग्रेटेस्ट रिजल्ट इन द वेमेन्स वर्ल्ड कप व्हाट आर यू लुकिंग फॉरवर्ड टू इन द कमिंग ओलंपिक्स इन टोक्यो 2021 ओबियसली इट्स ट्वेंटी ओलंपिक्स मोनिका मोनिका uh in 2015 we are in belgium and we won the ticket for olympics and first times in india uh girls get that ticket and in 2016 we are in olympics so it's a great moment for after in the coming years and now we are improving day by day and we are working hard for uh, this olympics as you seen in the world cup our team is doing great job there but we are little unlucky there we didn't get the medal there but i hope we get medal in the 2021 olympics so our team is doing great job now recently we played matches with the new zealand team and the best teams in the world and we won from them in test matches so we are looking forward in 2021 olympics so i think our team is doing great great work and hard work there super super monica so i think that's that's great words and um, journey has been phenomenal jis tarah se wo apni is journey ko nibha payi hain aur jis सर्कमस्टांसिस uh, से और जिस uh, माहौल से और जिस इन्वायरमेंट से और uh, मिला के जो उन्होंने अपनी ये जर्नी तय की है आई थिंक आप एक मिसाल हैं आप एक इंस्परेशन हैं फेलो विमेन विमेन प्लेयर्स के लिए और मैं समझता हूँ कि uh, आज जो आपको सुन रहे होंगे वो वो उससे बहुत ही अच्छी सीख लेंगे और आगे 
इस पे अमल करेंगे और आगे भी अपना रिप्रेजेंटेशन uh, अच्छा करेंगे सो कमिंग बैक टू ग्राम ग्राम ओवर टू यू फॉर द प्रेजेंटेशन एंड यू मे लाइक टू टेक द कंट्रोल ऑफ द प्रेजेंटेशन You're on mute. Uh, yeah, if if you could um, hand me the reins, is that possible? Uh, allow me to, to do the sharing. Yeah. Let's go to him instead. Or go to him. You are trying to. Still don't have it. Um... Graham, you have been shared the screen. You have to use that option there. Yeah, it's saying that uh, host disabled attendee screen sharing. Yeah, yeah. But it's only I'm going to be coming. So anyway, what, what I am going to show when we finally <laughs> get there is uh, uh, just some simple components of, uh, of of the penalty corner, and we'll start with the with the penalty corner defence, uh, and then move into the penalty corner attack, and we'll talk a little. We'll get Harmon uh, to speak to us a little bit about uh, his drag flicking technique. Hopefully, we we can get the, the technical things sorted out. Yeah, I think uh, you, can, okay. yeah, you can try that. I think I think that that's looking good now. Okay. Okay, that, that looks okay now, I think, yes. Um, so look, you talked to Sri, Sri Jesh, of course, uh, you should be number one on there, Sri, as, as the goalkeeper. That's yes. really important parts of, uh, and I think you find that in most teams, uh, certainly in, in the last sort of three teams that I've been involved with, the, the, go, the goalkeeper is who calls the shots. They are the ones that are sort of in charge of... Uh, of what type of defence is run. Uh, for me also, and this this isn't necessarily in the, in the order in which they're of their importance, but uh, the first rusher uh, is is for me is is one of the big keys of uh, of a penalty corner okay. defence. You, you probably agree with that, Sri? Yeah, definitely, coach. I, if I trust him, then definitely I can go for go for hundred percent. And, uh, and of course, the the other the other part components are the, are the second rusher, um, and and again, this will vary on depending on which which uh, whether you use a one three two two any of those sort of things, which we'll talk about in a little a little more. But the postman, if if we go back to the postman, actually, Dilip, um, you you were a, you were a postman. I, I'm, I'm, if I, if my memory serves me correctly. No. And uh, it, I was. Yeah, and it, it, it for for me the, the postman is someone who has not changed. They still need to be the most bravest person. <laughs> that they're standing on on the line in front of a ball that's coming at 120 kilometers an hour. Uh, yeah. Sometimes in front of the goalkeeper these days. I don't know where you used to stand. Uh, he used to stand behind the goalkeeper. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yes. So uh, postman very important, uh, and of course, then then the other, which is the other side, is is the head headman. Um, Shri, I don't know if you want to quickly talk about one three two two, maybe. Um. Yeah, I I can explain that. So uh, in three one, that that is what we normally every team does. That's like we we send our first rusher onto the top of circle, and we keep second rusher and the headman for any any of the indirection that is somewhere near to the stock area. And uh, the pole man definitely, as the coach said, uh, he stands in front of the goalkeeper. So uh, we we always use the first rusher to block the direct hit, and we uh, alarm him. Being a goalkeeper, I always uh, alarm him for if there is if I find it that uh, the attackers are going for any indirect thing. So he he might take uh, too slow, slow, 
and uh, the, now we you can see that the positioning of the uh, first rusher second rusher postman and headman so this is the exact thing what we do uh, during a penalty section when we call it like 3-1 yep and uh, so just to to quickly show you back one on on the right three on the left that's where we get the one three from when when we start in a two two it uh, then one of these guys and it's normally perhaps the second rusher and ends up starting on the on the right hand side of the keeper and becomes a two two uh, so and that's where they end up if for example the ball was to come to this battery i don't know if you can see my my mouse moving but if the ball comes to here then then uh, often this is the guy who will down make and come out to him. Uh, some just some important parts of obviously the postman will depend on whether he stands in front or behind. As Dillip said, he used to stand behind. These days we try and get them to perhaps stand in front so that uh, so that if it does hit them, the goalkeeper can get behind and we don't necessarily give away a penalty stroke. Stop. Um, maybe it's good to to show you some some real footage here. Uh, that is going to be easy. Yep. Now, the sad part is three is 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 that uh, it, you're not in the goal. <laughs> I'm no, sorry I, 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 no, it's it's fine. Uh, that okay. that is. Krishna is in the goal. You took us through it here. Uh, yes, coach. Uh, so uh, now I, I think uh, now uh, Amit is in a right right line so that uh, the goalkeeper can take advantage. I mean, like you know, he can shift uh, one step to the right. So that is what exactly Krishna is doing now. And even the second rusher, he is covering in Amit left side. So there is no space for him to flick on the left side. So goalkeeper is more more sure, confident about uh, the shot. I mean, like you know, anticipating a shot on the right side. And that is what coach uh, mentioned in the first stage where we need to trust. The key point in the penalty corner is the first rusher. And definitely the pole man. So uh, here uh, I can say that the, when Amit running, the left side is entirely blocked, and headman is blocking the deflection one. So that is a perfect, perfect combination to to put the goalkeeper in a comfort zone. Um, just maybe a point for for those who who, who are looking. If, if you watch, uh, if you watch Amit, and Amit, I, I think is you know uh, is probably one of the best runners in the world at the moment. Uh, if, if you notice, he, he actually slows down a little bit here and gets his stick up upright, projecting his, his legs as much as he can. And yeah. as you can also imagine, it takes a lot of uh, guts and, and uh, being, being brave is, is definitely a big part of, of, of this job. But um, that's this, and, and the line in which he runs is really important, as, uh, as Sri said. Uh, Sometimes what, what happens, and, and I'll uh, show you this, seems to have uh, frozen. Um, I'll just go through and watch it, just well, watch them again. But the, here's the first one, runs it down. Um, this one now, it, We'll, we'll talk about variations a little bit later, but th this is a really important part. And, and maybe Sri, you, you, can, you can talk us through this one from a point of view of, of the defense. Uh, yes, coach. Uh, in this one, uh, it's definitely we knew that, okay, Australians having uh, one, they placed only one penalty corner flicker in, in that battery. So uh, definitely we, we are going for one up. And uh, they shifted uh, their battery in one step to the, uh, I mean, like no, to the goalkeeper's left, and they bring the ball again, in, again to the right. So uh, ultimately, they got enough space to flick the ball. But in, in the better thing uh, here, I think uh, Amit anticipated that ball very well, and he slowed down. Uh, we can see that he slowed down and he take take his uh, line to the ball. And later on, he he find out a bit late that okay, that is again going for a you know backdoor thing. Then he tried his maximum best, but unfortunately, uh, Australian didn't place a penalty corner flicker into the second battery. That is why they just went up with a uh, slap, and uh, it was an easy save for Krishna. Yeah, great. Okay, look, um, one of the things that I, I also did did want to perhaps say to to those of you out out there thinking about penalty corner defence, it has become a very, very important part of, of the game of hockey. Uh, and 
when if, if you are a, a youngster who is thinking about how do I get in some of these uh, representative teams or teams a little bit uh, better, then having one of those skills that I just talked about from a defensive penalty corner as well as an attacking penalty corner we are about to talk about, then I think that's a really important skill to develop. And uh, when it comes down to selection, it is, it's also very important because uh, if, if, if there are two players, one has a great uh, ability to stop corners as a first rusher, then, you know, his, his or her um, ability to be selected will, will increase. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have anything else regarding no. the defensive? Yeah, I, I have a question. Who decides whether it's 3-1, 2-2, uh, and, and, and why do you decide? Uh. It's a really good question, Three probably best to answer that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Flores, uh, uh, on the field, a uh, goalkeeper take that call. And uh, definitely when, when we, I mean, when, when the goalkeeper is preparing, I mean, the players are preparing for the penalty corner defense, goalkeeper is the one who is looking forward and watching the mm -hmm. attacking uh, style and attacking players. So, uh, we already do our uh, homework uh, prior to that match. So, we knew who is, who is going to flick and who is the best flicker. So if I mm -hmm. find out there is only one flicker, probably I always go for three one, which is like we send only one uh, first pressure up and we keep second pressure bit reserve for any deflection. If, whether I can, I mean, like you know, when I find out that okay there are two flickers on the top of circle, then definitely I am in a doubt. I'm like you no, know, which which player is going to flick? That is the time we probably we go for a two up where. Uh, we always alert two attackers, I mean, like, you know, two rushes to anticipate. If the, if it goes to the first rusher, the one man go up and the second one stay back. And if it goes to the second uh, battery, the other person go up and the first one stay back. So mm -hmm. probably it's, it's the uh, penalty corner defense is the is goalkeeper's responsibility. Okay. Monica, do you do you have a, a, a yeah in girls also goalkeeper is taking this decision uh, while we are going for one three or two two whatever always goalkeeper is taking this decision we just follow that because we at uh, that time we are just wearing the we are busy with our stuff wearing the uh, stuff yeah yeah um, anyone else defense before we move on to the probably the main reason we're here is to yeah. Yes. Yes, my son. Ah, three days. Tell me, you are playing a better hockey game. Today, you are doing a lot of good performance. Yes, my son. And you are leading the defense. Tell me, you have the most difficult thing when the opponent is playing or the hitter is playing, so what do you think is the most dangerous area in the field? लगता है जहाँ पे आपको लगता है कि यह बोल सकते हैं और डिफिकल्ट कौन से आपको डिफिकल्ट लगता है दिल्ली भाई एक्चुअली आजकल तो हर एक प्लेयर का स्टाइल और स्किल डिफरेंट है ठीक है तो हाँ भाई सब सुना है तो रहा है Yes, I'm listening to you. Okay, sir. So, when you write down a specialist area for everyone, where you flick one inch or two inch on the ball, when you say that the ball is on the ball, when you try to mark the ball, it's the most difficult for me, because we all have to write down the ball for the ball. When we write down the ball for the ball, when we write down the ball for the ball, when we write down the ball for the ball, when we write down the ball, जो बॉल हमारा किकर की ऊपर साइड में आता है वो बहुत डिफिकल्ट है सेव करने के लिए। ओह ओके थैंक यू। ओके बस। श्रीजेश भैया वन क्वेश्चन फ्रॉम माय साइड। यस प्लीज। लाइक लाइक इन पेनल्टी कॉर्नर लाइक यू यू लाइक टू टेक ड्रैग बॉल्स और यू लाइक टू टेक डिफ्लेक्शंस व्हिच वन इज हार्ड फॉर यू � that's why we keep the second rusher and headman to keep the alert. Because the balls which is deflected from the stroke area, that is really difficult for a goalkeeper to stay. So that is why we always command the second rusher and the headman to look after those areas to avoid those deflections. And if any deflection from the pusher, I mean, like, you know, the back to pusher thing, it's not easy, but still 
goalkeeper can take a full strength i mean full length uh, dive to block that but i always uh, i hate to take a deflection from the stroke line or, or the back yeah. straight because in men's team like l- very less deflections are played i saw with uh, i think belgium played many deflection i think yes. which i yes. saw yeah yeah that's why but just... if you if you get a direct fix it's always easy to save but in in a deflection that is uh, really tough yeah sudesh yeah. uh, a couple of good questions coming up in fact a lot of people are uh, texting and uh, wanting to ask a lot of questions uh, but i'm not going to halt in between because brand is in a in a motion yes, but just exactly. uh, just on the on the point uh, somebody is wanting to ask what is going through your head when you are about to face the drag flick say uh, as i mentioned before we we always analyze the opponent so we knew the plus and minus uh, plus and minus of the attacker and where is their strong point and there is a weak point but uh, we you when you during a match you are not in a state to predict the ball you can't anticipate the ball so uh, my my thing is that okay i knew the attacker i i watched the ball and i just i just follow the ball that is what i do rather than thinking about where is going to attack where is going to flick the ball i just i just watch the ball and i just try to save that ball wonderful graham over to you hey, shree just just a quick one how important is it uh for deception with a, with a drag flicker for a goalkeeper so i i pretend that or i look like i'm i'm flicking in one place but i actually flick in another place uh that that is happen coach that is the quality of lot of the uh lot of the drag flickers nowadays in the modern hockey they keep the ball till the last moment and they they take they just divert the ball through their wrist and they just, they flick in different corners but uh for for the goalkeepers it is the toughest challenge nowadays you you can't you can't act for the first action i mean react for the first action you need to really wait till the time they release the ball from their stick and you need to go for the ball okay that's good all right well in the in the interest of keeping moving um let, let's have a quick look at before we talk about the drag flick let's talk about the other components of uh, of attacking penalty corner uh the first one of course in the old days dilip we used to call this the push out and the uh, I think in in the real old days we called it the pusher outer up <laughs> but uh, these days they call it the injector or the inj- injection so that is or she is very important and and it's important I think for for the in- injection to be as straight and as hard as possible now there are lots of different techniques these days but but to me one of the most important is is uh, aiming your left foot or exactly to where you wish the ball to go now obviously as you get better at at that skill you can start to to play around and and use different techniques but if if you are starting off then then to me point your your left foot towards the ball and make sure that your your movement from right to left is is in in the line in which the ball you want the ball to go um maybe monica i, I passed to you for for the for the next important part and that's the stop or the stick stop the trap monica uh sorry you you're um, mute monica yeah yeah uh as a stopper i must say like it's a important part to play in a pc like uh what what i use always like i make my grip strong and i always keep my head over the ball and take my left leg back while stopping the ball to give more time to the trigger or a hitter and i always take the ball line to uh yeah. make uh, and uh, i stand in half squat position because it easy to adjust me to move right or left easily move i can easily react where the ball is coming if sometimes its ball is not on the good position then i can easily move right or left yeah yeah i think being mobile is a really a really good point um i think some i think what what happened perhaps in the last 10 years uh, our um our stick stoppers have, have become a little little more immobile a little too uh, stationary and so if if there is uh, a misdirected push then perhaps we don't take enough advantage of it so that's a really good point monica um of course this one here which we will come back to the drag flick which is which is a, a really important part of it there's also part which uh, which is perhaps uh, a, a bit of a lost art 
However, we, we do have uh, two guys on our panel who, who might like to share a, a little bit of uh, knowledge about the hit briefly. Floris? Yeah, I can. Um, sorry. Am I on mute? Yeah, no. yeah, no, you're right. No, no. The, um, yeah, what shall I say about the hit? I think. Um, Actually, I uh, I feel a bit sad that nobody is hitting the ball, or hardly yeah. any is hitting the ball. Um, especially when you have a good uh, a good drag flick um, or a good drag flick specialist on on the top of the tee, a hit can be still can be very dangerous, I think, or uh, very effective. Um, just because if 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 the goalie is standing and you have a good hit, uh, the goal the goalkeeper cannot. Uh, stop the ball anyhow. Um, yeah, we'll see some uh, video footage of the old days. Um, even if the goalie is is all the way down, if you you have the perfect hit, like uh, I have to be honest, uh, the second hit here, this one, uh, was one of my best hits uh, ever. Um, so it was a bit lifted. If you hit the ball on the goal and, and the goalie is down, you, you have to lift it a bit. Um, which is quite difficult, and not too much, of course, because it cannot be over the uh, height on the board. Uh, but if, if it's on the ground, um, it's very easy to stop as well. Um, so for the hit, and here we see a good example of uh, Dilip uh, also hitting it over the goal here, by the way, I think. Um, so, so, so lifting it and controlling it for the hit is, uh, is also diff uh, very important. Um, if, you, if you look at techniques, you see different techniques. If 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 you see Dilip and the Indian style of, of hitting is more straight up, and uh, my my hits were uh, my body was really low. Um, if you if you look at uh, my body position, I was really low and uh, almost like I had an um, uh, a drag flick. If if you look at the drag flicks later on, also the body weight is really low. And if I hit the ball. Uh, you see, I'm very uh, low. And actually, if you, you you see me finishing with just one hand, if you look at m most of the drag flickers, they also finish it uh, with one hand. And that's just because if you have the, the speed of the rotation, uh, that gives you the the strength of a flick, but also of a hit. It's it's the rotation of the body. It's not the arms which, who, who makes the the strong hit. It's the rotation of the body. Uh, your, 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 your torso and your, your legs, they give the power. And of course, you need the hands as well and the arms, but the rotation definitely makes the, um, the, the big effort. And that's why I think if you are a, a bit lower in position, but it's really technical, but if you're lower in position, you can uh, have a better rotation. If you're straight up, it's more with your hands. And if you, you, you're down with your body, you have more uh, rotation in your body. Uh, Dilip, did you want to add something? Uh, yeah, I agree with uh, Flores. Uh, I was hit when I was hit, that time, I was very bent. और साथ ही साथ फोकस मेरा रहता था मेरे टारगेट और बेंड होके होके आपका शोल्डर एंड वेस्ट मूवमेंट को आप साथ में आप आगे लेके चलेंगे तभी बॉल कांटेक्ट जब होगा तो इस बॉल का स्पीड पावर और बढ़ेगा और उसी हिसाब से मैं ध्यान रख के मैं शॉर्ट कर्नर मैं ट्राई करता था और मेरे लिए मेरे काफी फेवरेट शॉट काफी बार रह चुका है और स्पेशली ये गोल भी मेरा एक फेवरेट गोल है सो फॉर द फॉर द बेनिफिट ऑफ पैनलिस्ट दिलीप एग्रीज विद व्हाटएवर फ्लोरेस हैड एक्सप्रेस्ड एंड हिज स्टाइल ऑफ एग्जीक्यूशन ऑफ दैट पर्टिकुलर आर्ट वाज आल्सो वेरी सिमिलर एंड इट्स आल्सो द ट्रांजिशन फ्रॉम द एंटायर बॉडी वे ट्रांसफरिंग कमिंग फॉरवर्ड एंड दोस काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स एंड but that's it basically well Doris, i think to be honest I, I think one of the one of the reasons that that the hit has gone out of the game it, it actually has gone out of the game uh, in the field as well a, a lot i, I think yeah. perhaps, perhaps india is a little bit more uh, you know we teach it a little better uh, still here 
at, at the grassroots. Uh, but I think, to be honest, the the actual stick uh, now now has a real bend in it, so it's so it's very difficult to uh, to hit the ball uh, properly, and and with with it, it takes a lot of uh, of practice to to hit yeah. the ball along the ground flat exactly yep. where you want it. If if you younger guys would look at at our three sticks, you would think that it's almost bends back the other way. It, it was so straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, no, that's that's for sure. I think that's 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 one of the main reasons. And uh, to be honest, if if you look at the sweep uh, shots they do now, it, it's so easy to to travel long distance. So it's not there's no need to hit no, uh, that that, that sure. often, and it's easier. Yeah. I think the, the, why the Indians still do it is that uh, they have a lot of grassroots hockey yeah. on mud pitches. And yeah. it's more effective if you hit the ball on the mud pitch mm. than if you uh, flick it or, or that. But um, so that's where they st still have their their hit in Indian um, oh. in, in in Indian uh, hockey. But it is the straight up technique more just because yeah. of the bumpy the bumpy yeah. uh, grass roots. You, you you play more straight up than uh, on the artificial pitch where it's it's more uh, horizontal stick as well. So so with the the sweep shot or stopping the ball, it's more uh, a horizontal stick or a diagonal. And in uh, grassroots, it's more straight up like all the the the, the Indian the Pakistani uh, style like uh, from our days and even still in, in nowadays in uh, in India just because of. Um, yeah, if you play uh, up to 14 on um, on a mud pitch, bumpy pitch, then um, you have you develop a different style. Yeah. Uh, okay. Last one, and then we'll get back. To, we'll go yeah. back to the to the drag flick. Is is just the the variations that that, that we have, and uh, and I think what tends to happen these days um, is that uh, and I, and it probably came from from the Dutch originally was that uh, if you had a very very good corner hitter flicker. Then, um, then you, you probably makes good sense to use them uh, a lot. You know, the, the the use of a variation isn't is uh, brings into it an extra complication that perhaps is is not required. But they, these days, it's a major part of penalty corner attack, and so things like uh, deflections. Uh, I've got backdoor there, which is which I think uh, which is. What that uh, variation we saw before three with uh, with with Australia, we would call that a backdoor where you where you push the ball behind you. There's the spin, you know, where where they pretend they're going to flick and then de deliver it to someone beside. Lots of those which uh, which we won't get too much into today, but just be aware that those variations, both sides of the goal, are really important parts. Um, so if, if you look here, this is this is how. Um, Often we will set up and in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Sometimes we, or most times, we have actually eight up there, which leaves it a little short at the back. And and uh, there are lots of coaches that still use seven or six, or depending on how comfortable you feel with that. And and probably a scoreline will also depend on that. Uh, a lot of teams also use two batteries now, as you see here. You know, a drag flitter or drag flicker or a hitter, but. Um, that's uh, some of the other options. Um, maybe we, we watch a little bit of footage here. This, this is uh, against Australia, and, and of course it's Rapindapal. And, um, you know, really nice, nice goal. Oh, sorry. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I think that, that one probably just beat Tyler from, from speed. Uh, no, Coach, I think Three. what you asked what you, what you, you ask me before, the same thing which I want to mention it here. So uh, Rupinder took that action for left and Taylor anticipated that ball and moved it. But the end of that flick, he just reused just his finger. Exactly. So that is why the goalkeeper didn't get the line of the ball and he just considered between his leg. Mm -hmm. It's, it's a really good point because, you, you know, deception will often beat straight speed sometimes, you know. You, you don't necessarily have to be the fastest flicker. And uh, someone like uh, Jackson was, wasn't necessarily the fastest flicker in the world, but but very, very effective. Yeah, yeah and he got, a, he got a weird stride. Beg your pardon? 
I think he got a different style. He just hooked yes, the ball and yeah. took it. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, and comes from behind a lot. Uh, exactly. He hides the ball. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we'll just play this again. My, my computer is, uh, isn't liking the, the speed of it all. I just want to uh, just just watching this as well, but I just want to mention one one more part of about uh, the variations, um, because um, also if you have variations and uh, maybe you can add the, the the girls and the, and, and uh, or Monica and uh, others can can see how much training does and effort it will take to have uh, good variations because normally. In Holland, I see a lot of variations play. Uh, just they, they they see it on the board. Okay, we'll do this variation, but they train once, twice, even with this, without without any um, defenders. So they, they 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 try it once or twice, and then in in the match, it normally is no goal. How how many times do you think you, you need? To practice the, the variations as well, but, um, and, and how many times do you practice all these variations? Because I think it's a key point. I know it's for the drag flick here, but I just wanted to, to ask this one. Maybe go, uh, Hello. Yeah. Yeah, I think for variations, it takes time to like to be to become a perfection in the variations. Yeah, for like uh, every time your ball has to go on the right spot mm -hmm. by deflection. If the ball are not on the uh, right spot, you can't deflect, and yep. then you lose the PCA. Then I I think in a week you must have to train three times for half an hour, not more than half an hour, just for half an hour to perfect the corners. Yeah, just just for the also for the um, uh, deflection and all the variations of the PC. Yeah, for the deflections and yeah for the variations. Yeah, yeah. I think three four time in a in a week. I think yeah. three four times. Yeah, we have to practice for half an hour for the PC deflections. So it takes time to yeah. be, uh, to make perfect PC. Yeah. Yeah. For the deflection, uh, you can't hit a little bit right or left. You just have to hit mm -hmm. or to drag or to slap on a right position. So yep. it takes time. So to be perfect, it takes time. Yeah. And we need to practice three, four times in a week for half yeah. an hour. Yeah. I think I that's think. a really, really important point, Monica, that you talk yeah. about um, regarding the the work that, for example, Harman Preet, you, you know, spends a lot of his time not, yeah. not only drag flicking, but also looking as though he's going to drag flick and then de de um, deliver a, a really good pass or, you know, a, be able to be able to do a spin or a backdoor. All those things are really important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, that's, that's one more clip, yeah. Yeah, no, 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 there is this. It, it's coming. <laughs> Sorry, I'll just go, go back to the start again. Here we go. We've shown Bob. Now, Harmon, time, time for you to stand up here now. No. Really really nice yeah. From, from Harmon. Got a deflection. Yeah. And so, maybe Harmon, yeah, where are you? Yeah. Can you play this? Yeah. So in this clip, I will say that the main focus is on the main focus. So it of course, the starting is the ball is and is not the ball is not the ball. If your ball speed is the ball speed, I think you will have a lot of time to get a first pressure easily beat because of timing. So first thing is that the ball speed is not the and the second thing is that you ball pe approach the ball. So uh, I think, uh, can you go back? Can you go back, coach? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. So when I approach, approaching the ball. So, uh, yeah, stop it. So 
यहाँ पे आ, मैं बोलना चाहूंगा कि ये पोजीशन आपकी बहुत मैटर करती है क्योंकि अगर आप आपकी बॉल स्लो भी आ रही है आपका जो लेफ्ट फुट है तो बॉल के सामने भी हो, सामने होना चाहिए बिकॉज ऑफ उसका एक रीजन है कि आपका जितना लेफ्ट फुट है जो बॉल और बॉल के आगे जाएगा तो आप उसमें टाइम ज्यादा लोगे अपना और फर्स्ट प्रेशर को बहुत ईजी है कि आपको अच्छे से रीड कर सकता है वो तो अपना जो लेफ्ट फुट है आप बॉल के सामने रख सकते हो आप उसके पीछे रख सकते हो तो उसी की वजह से आप जितना भी ड्रैग ज्यादा करते हो शॉर्ट ड्रैग करते हैं तो आपको ज्यादा टाइम मिल सकता है इसमें कि आप इजीली आप फ्लिक कर सको और जो मैं बोलूंगा कि जो ग्रिप के बारे में बोलूंगा कि सभी का डिफरेंट स्टाइल होता है तो ड्रैग ट्रिक जब करते हैं कोई नीचे से पकड़ते हैं कोई क्लोज ग्रिप रखता है तो इसमें यही है कि और नेक्स्ट स्टेप है कहीं को ज्यादा कुछ तो इस पोजीशन में बोलूंगा कि जब आप रोल कर रहे हो तो आपका जो बॉल और बॉडी का जो डिस्टेंस है वो बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है कि आप अपनी रीच से बाहर जाओगे तो आप अपनी सिर्फ जो आर्म्स की आप पावर यूज कर सकते हो तो अगर आपकी बॉडी क्लोज है आपके आप मतलब बॉल और बॉडी का जो डिस्टेंस है वो मेनटेन है तो आप जब नीचे स्लाइडली जाओगे तो आप ऑटोमेटिकली जो बॉल है आपकी स्टिक के साथ रोल करेगी तो आप लास्ट मोमेंट में आप या लास्ट मोमेंट में आप अपनी फुल बॉडी का यूज कर सकते हो कि आप अगर आपकी बॉल बॉडी से थोड़ा ज्यादा डिस्टेंस ज्यादा रहेगा तो आप सिर्फ अपने आर्म्स का यूज कर रहे हो कि अगर उसमें ज्यादा फोर्स नहीं मिलेगा आपको जो है कि आपको डायरेक्शन नहीं मिलेगा तो उसमें मैं यही बोलूंगा कि आपका जो डिस्टेंस है वो बहुत मेनटेन होना चाहिए एंड उसमें आपका जो लास्ट जो फॉलो थ्रू है वो बहुत इम्पोर्टेंट है कि आपका जो फिनिश कर रहे हो तो आपका फेस गोल पोस्ट पे होना चाहिए और लास्ट तक आपको बस बॉल को वॉच करना है कि आप, आपका फेस आपका फोकस अपना बॉल पे होना चाहिए कि अगर आप आपको गोल पोस्ट में देखने की जरूरत नहीं है आप जिस तरह के एक एम है आपका जो आपको सेट करना है कि आप कहाँ पे जा रहे हो कहाँ पे ड्राइव को माने जा रहे हो तो उसको मायने रख के माइंड में रख के और अपना फोकस है जो बॉल पे रखना चाहिए तो आपको इजी रहेगा कि आप आ, कैसे बॉल रोल कर रही है कहाँ पे मेरी फिनिशिंग है आपकी बॉडी मूवमेंट कैसी है आपकी जो आ, जो फॉलो थ्रू है वो बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है लास्ट में कि जब आप फॉलो थ्रू कर रहे हो अपनी फुल बॉडी को यूज करो कि आपको आप स्टैंडिंग मत रहो अपनी बॉडी को पूरा फॉलो थ्रू करो कि आपकी बॉडी जो है फर्दर जाए गोल पोस्ट की तरफ Okay. Um, just just one point about your front foot here. Um, one of the one of the studies that that we did in Australia um, in five ten years ago now was that, uh, as far as drag flicking is concerned, if that front foot can the closer it can get to pointing at the goal, the less injuries come from that because there isn't. And you also end up with a more open, um, more. What's the word I'm looking for? More rotation, if you like, because yeah. with your front foot. More, more, more rotation in your hip. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So that's a really good point. Okay. Yeah. Um, is there anyone else who wanted to to add anything? Because I think we're, we're I've tried pushing the thank you slide back. <laughs> Keep coming. <laughs> no, I think. Uh, oh no, go ahead. Go through. There's there's one question which I have uh, before oh. I think you guys wind up on that presentation uh, is. Uh, For Harman, which is uh, which battery is the mainly flick from and why penalty corner which is attack? Is it from the left or right? Is there any any thumb rule or it works to the positions? It works to the scenarios. Uh, I think. Uh, इसमें मैं बोलूँगा कि आप uh, जैसे इसमें variation की use करते हैं variation एक हम uh, जैसे मैं बोला था कि आप uh, स्पिन कर सकते हैं उसमें इसमें ड्रैग फ्लिक में भी ऐसे जो वेरिएशन होते हैं जो श्री भाई को अफकोर्स पता होगा कि आप लास्ट मोमेंट में अपना रिस्क चेंज कर रहे हो लास्ट मोमेंट में आप राइट right जा रहे हो आप शो कर रहे हो कि आप लेफ्ट जा रहे हो बट आपकी जो लास्ट मोमेंट है फ्लिक है वो राइट साइड जा रही है तो ये बहुत इंपॉर्टेंट है उसी में कि आपका जो लास्ट जो फिनिशिंग है आप शो कर रहे हो कि आप सीधा ड्रैग कर रहे हो एंड लास्ट मोमेंट में आप अपना रिस्क को यूज कर रहे हो लेफ्ट पे जा रहा है तो ऐसा कुछ नहीं आप बहुत uh, एंगल मतलब अगर फर्स्ट बैटरी होती है तो डिसाइड होता है कि uh, जो भी हम मीटिंग में डिसाइड करते हैं ओपोनेंट्स को ऑब्जर्व करते हैं कि क्या उसका वीकनेस है और कहाँ पे हम उसके तो कर सकते हैं तो 
I have one question for Graham. Yeah. We all know that PC plays a, a very important role in the world hockey. Even it decides the match set of the match. Currently, we have world class uh, that players like uh, Rupinder Pal Singh, Harman Preet. But uh, what about future? What's your vision to produce world class that player for India? Do you have any plan for it? Yes, yeah, of course. The, um, Chris is working with uh, with with a lot of the juniors at the moment. We we have uh, we have people like and and you you will know them. Uh, Zip, you you have we we have two two young guys from from your Dipson and and uh, and Nilam. Uh, Nilam. So yeah. yeah. Oh. Yes. So so those. They've, they've just for for example, but but we also have others in in, in the juniors coming through, um, but uh, but yeah, they, they are they are certainly we need more of them, and I think that's something that uh, that uh, that as as Flora said in in uh, in the Netherlands, it's uh, it's a sort of um, initially it was it was a given that you would produce more drag flickers. I think India in the last ten years has has, uh, has been very prolific, meaning that there's a lot have been created from from uh, from the current uh, stocks. So mm -hmm. we certainly are in, involved in trying to make sure that we can keep that flow going. Yeah, I think the um, you, you just need a lot of time effort to put in the drag flick and. Um, the structure like India, where they have uh, hockey academies, where you uh, you live 24 or seven, it makes life easy, um, and I think that's a benefit for uh, for for Indian drag flickers. When you're young and you want to become a drag flicker, of course you need uh, the good body, the good technique, and 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 stuff. But you also need to create time for yourself. And here in Holland, it's it's more difficult because you just train with your team and just get it get to the pitch. And train and train and train. It that's more uh, more an effort than when you're at um, at an academy where you're living close to the uh, to the pitch or you're every day on the pitch. So uh, putting more hours in into it is um, is definitely uh, necessary. And I think that's a good benefit for an Indian hockey style or the hockey uh, structure uh, compared to to the Netherlands and others as well. So, um, but you need you need uh, artificial pitches to to practice. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I just I I have just one uh, one, one question. Like I had in the defense as well. Um, maybe it's uh, how I look at all these uh, corners. Uh, Armand, um, uh, when do you decide where to push, which corner, and 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 do you shift uh, during the your, your drag flick, or or is it? What are you thinking when you're at the top of the D? Yeah, of course. Uh, uh, we decide in the meeting actually. So if I'm going to take the uh, penalty corner, so then we decide in the meeting. So we are going to right and we are going to left because uh, we observe the opponent's goalkeeper. Yeah. That's why. So we know the weakness and we know the uh, strongest uh, area for the goal, uh, opponent's goalkeeper. So that it's all about uh, the opponent's goalkeeper because uh, if uh, sometimes like uh, the balls uh, didn't come straight. Actually, so then I have to decide the way. I just have to mm -hmm. uh, keep uh, keep in my mind. We just have to uh, push in the in the goal, and uh, then if then we can, uh, I think uh, we, we can get the rebound, and uh, then we can uh, we can get the uh, retake PCL, you know. So yeah, yeah, like this. And 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 um, you this I think you know what to do, and then you just decide this is what I'm gonna do. Is it? So you know yeah. before. Yeah. Okay. And um, do you have some mental uh, mental part of it? Uh, do you visualize or whatever if you're at the top of the tee in uh, in a big big match? What 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 are you mentally doing? Mentally, uh, 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 mentally, uh, I must say, like uh, I, I where I felt my uh, comfortable zone. If I'm good in ride down and. Uh, and it doesn't matter if a goal uh, goalkeeper also good in right down. So I know I, I just uh, trust myself because of uh, I'm doing the all hard work and uh, in the training, I keep practicing all the, uh, all this. Huh? So yeah, mm -hmm. so I go, I go for it. I, I just believe in myself 
so yeah this there's the mental things yeah yeah and, and, and even siri okay even the siri yes we are practicing practicing together we know okay siri yes we where is the where is very good is so he's in a uh, good in a uh, left down or right down I'll, i'll just keep practicing on that because yeah. of we have to improve ourselves yeah yeah and, and do you have any ritual before you drag flick in the, in a match do you have a ritual this Sorry? Do you have a ritual? So you have. Um, uh, I, I have. Hey, hey, Pooja, jo tu kuch karta hai kya? Practice match se pehle, especially Pooja party kuch. Yeah. No, yeah. Always, always. I'm like in the room. I will always do a prayer before match. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Yep. But Rajiv, are there any uh, any other questions, or we? I think we've overstepped our time again. Uh, yes, Graham. Thanks. In fact, it's been a, a lengthy session, right from session one to session two. But I think it's been absolutely interesting uh, for the audience, uh, right from the panelists who joined us on the session one to to uh, the young uh, hockey players as well as enthusiastic sports people listening to us. Uh, Before we wind up, I would like to take a message from you, Graham, uh, for the young hockey players of the state who are uh, part of the High Performance Center. Uh, what is it that one take which you would, or what is one suggestion you would like to make uh, to the young aspiring hockey players, uh, you know, in the academies? Yeah, um, I think I think a few of our, uh, our panelists today have have mentioned it, but. Um, I think it's dream, you know. You have to you have to want that that uh, want to get to the Olympic Games, want to win that gold medal, to to keep dreaming and and don't put anything in your way, in in your head, because I think often we become our own uh, worst enemies in that in that we we limit what we can achieve in in this world. And I think um, if you think you can get there, I'll. I'll A quick story. My mother. I remember when I was 16. I came back from a national camp, and and uh, and I told I told her. I said, look, um, the the coach said that that there was probably only going to be one or two from that group of 30 people. I said, and I said to mum, I'm going to be one of those people. I'm going to be. And, and she of course said, yeah, yeah, that's that's good, Graham. You know, you. you but for me, I I, I knew that I, I was prepared. That I wanted to be there, and I wanted to do it. And I think that if if you really have that ambition and you want that dream, then uh, then all things will part out of the way. Correct. If, if dream big. Strongly enough. Dream big. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so uh, yeah, that, that's that's exactly you know uh, this session was all about because we need to motivate the 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 hockey talent in our country and uh, the young aspiring uh, athletes. Who are trying to make a mark, making all those sacrifices they need to do in their daily lives, right? From mm -hmm. studies to many other facets, they are expected to do well as well. So there is a lot of mental pressure, there is a lot of parental pressure, there is a lot of other stuff which goes with it. And I think it's the end of the day, it's the determination and it's the willpower, mm -hmm. it's the will mm -hmm. to do what you want uh, makes the difference. And as you rightly said, that you have to have a dream to fulfill it. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, It's it's a great way, uh, you know, words of wisdom. Uh, before I hand it over uh, to Diksha to conclude the the session, I would also like to make a small announcement through this forum because this is not just the one odd webinar which we are going to do uh, uh, as uh, part of the joint uh, initiative of Government of Odisha and Naval Tata Hockey Academy. Uh, basically, it's going to be uh, in order to, you know, basically. Uh, Uh, it's all in order for these ecosystem stakeholders to align well with our objectives and have access to the knowledge of our technical experts. We will deliver a set of periodic virtually uh, delivered seminars, lectures on well curated topics in the sports of hockey that would help develop the sporting ecosystem in Odisha. This is something which is like a pledge from our side. We need to go do more. And this is where I think we need your help. And uh, we look forward to your uh, Uh, valuable inputs as and when, and uh, are grateful to Dr. Batra and the entire team, Elena, everybody to chip in and give us all the support. Uh, Grand thanks, thanks a, a ton 
for putting this together. Uh, Shrijesh, Hamantreet, Ponika, Dilip Bhai, everybody. I think everybody. Flores, I've been working with Flores from last uh, year or so. And I can tell you, uh, he's a taskmaster. He believes in what he wants. And as he has clear vision to what he expects out of the grassroots activities, which is a very big thing uh, for us as an academy. And I think uh, this is what is going to yield results for us going forward, because that's where the talent is coming from. At Naval Tata Hockey Academy, Odisha, I take this opportunity to thank uh, all the panelists for being here and providing this valuable input. Uh, and uh, look forward to many more associations. And uh, you know, uh, thank you very much once again for uh, educating me uh, to whatever little I could also uh, grasp and uh, uh, benefit out of it. So over to you, Diksha. Thank you. Thank you, Rajiv ji. In fact, uh, you've already thanked everyone. So I, I mean, before we end this, but Rajiv ji, if you allow me and Monica, if you're willing, I want to ask a last question, if it's okay. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Monica, basically, you know, we, we started this with the momentum towards uh, post-COVID-19 Olympics. And of course, uh, we had a wonderful technical session right now as well. But, you know, I a lot is, lot is being talked about mental health at this point of time. You know, we, we see a lot of this, a lot of debate, a lot of discussions on mental health uh, at this point on social media everywhere. Uh, I wanted to ask, um, you know, particularly this question to you because, you know, obviously uh, it's been postponed and now the Olympics are happening in 2021. At this point with this lockdown and particularly when this is a team sport, this is not an individual sport, what, what is it, uh, you know, that uh, motivates, how can a player, how can a sports person stay motivated? And uh, what about the mental well-being? I would, I would like your viewpoint on this. I think the Olympic Games is the biggest platform for any athlete. And to participate in it, it's a, a huge honor for an, any athlete. Like, I feel like uh, Olympic Day is a not to uh, celebrate the day for the to spirit of our sports and sportsmanship, but it also to encourage the people to lead an active uh, lifestyle. So I just think it's uh, great to see that many people's, people uh, come from various walks of life, like uh, different age groups. They are coming together and to celebrate this occasion. And I feel in today's competitive world, people fail to devote time to indulge in the physical fitness activities, I think. And this occasion, I feel, can be a great starting point. Yeah. Right. So I think I'm, I'm sure, uh, you know, a lot of young sports person who are listening to you right now would also feel motivated. And uh, yes, I mean, uh, like, like we said, like I think in the beginning also we discussed that though there is a pandemic, but we did celebrate Olympics Day today and how with such luminaries and such legends uh, from the sporting fraternity and we are indeed grateful to all of them from panel one to this panel to everyone who's joined us and a big thank you to all the audience everyone who's been watching us live on YouTube, who've registered for this call who've been watching the show thank you so so much uh, god bless you stay safe and once again a big thank you to all our panelists thank you and, and a big chuck day india Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.